Spirit Soccer is brought to you by Stroh's and Stro Light, fire brewed for smoother taste. By Burger King, where you get those juicy flame broiled burgers that are never fried. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? By Mellon Bank, a neighbor you can count on. Member FDIC. By Thrift Drug, the R expert, where you get R extra service. And by Cameron Coca Cola. Coke is it. Illinois. It's our Pittsburgh spirit against the Chicago Sting. A very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Chicago. I'm John Sanders. This is John Paul Della Camera working with me today. The big question is which Pittsburgh spirit team is going to show up this afternoon? The one that lost Wednesday in St. Louis 7 to 2, or the one that defeated Tacoma 10 to 5 in the Civic Arena on Thursday? It'll be a good afternoon, John, if the same team shows up that was there Thursday night. It was a great game from start to finish. Stan Tulecki scored 34 seconds into the game. That set the pace. He had two goals, three assists, the offensive player of the game. Ian Sibbies continued his hot streak. He scored three times, but it was a great team effort, and John Kowalski went to the bench often and well. We have not defeated the Chicago Sting this year. We're 0 2 against them and one big reason is their team captain number 12 Carl Heinz Granizo what a goal scorer he is he's tough to mark he has 56 goals this season 41 assists for 97 points but he has eight hat tricks six game winning goals in the last game here Earhart kept marked him out of the game then Earhart got hurt then Topolsky took over he got hurt and Granizo ended up with two goals and one assist and Chicago came from behind to win well, as a matter of fact Carl Heinz Granizo scored nine points in two games against the Pittsburgh Spirit he has been outstanding for the Pittsburgh Spirit, uh, the leading score in this series, the games against Chicago, has been, as usual, number 13, Stan Terlecki. Stan has a total of five points in the two games against Chicago, and we're going to have to look to him again this afternoon. And I'm sure Chicago will be looking to Stan as well because he has 35 goals, 25 assists for 60 points. He is the key to the Polish line. When he is on, he can help Kapka, he can help Sibis. And as of late, both of those two players, I think their play with Stan has improved a great deal, and that line is starting to do the things that everyone thought they could do at the beginning of the season. Kansas City is not playing this afternoon. If the Spirit win, we'll be within one half game of that last playoff spot as the push continues. MISL Soccer coming up from Chicago. The Spirit against the Chicago Sting. You are watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. But I recall a weekend afternoon game here that went to overtime and was one of the most exciting soccer games that we've had on our series. Paul Chow beat Victor Naguera in sudden death overtime, and it was a very enjoyable plane ride home. Well, let's hope we have another one this afternoon as the Chicago Sting Pittsburgh Spirit meet for the third time this season. This is a back-to-back home-and-home weekend series between these two teams. Peter Movlick will be starting in goal for the Pittsburgh Spirit. Peter's record is 8-11. and 11. And at the other end of the field for the Chicago Sting, their goalkeeper this afternoon is Victor Naguero. Victor wears number one. There he is. Victor is 18 and 11 coming in. We're underway. Here is John Paul Della Camera. Thank you, John Sanders. Our Giant Eagle goal getter contestant is Russ Redshaw. He has chosen Paul Child. So it's $100 in groceries from the new Giant Eagle if Paul Child scores in the opening quarter. Topolsky bring it into the attack zone. Cuts it to his left. Takes the shot. Blocked away by Pat Magali, and it will go into the stands out of play. That'll give us a chance to set it up for you. The Polish connection out there, Stan Terlecki along with Ian Sibbies and Zeke Kapka, John O'Hara, the team captain, and Adam Topolsky round things out for the spirit in front of Peter Mavlik. We'll set up Chicago in a moment as O'Hara plays it to Topolsky. That's Magali marking Kapka. Z trying to get in. Magali breaks it up. He is out there, Magali is, along with Manny Rojas, Derek Spaulding, Carl Heinz Grinitza and Neil Roberts in front of Victor Naguera. Gino DiPolito, the senior referee, Vladimir Holupa, the other official out of the field. Magali, right wing boards for Grinitza. Picked up quickly by Adam Topolsky. Up for Ian Sibbies. John Kowalski said earlier he would wait to see what Chicago was doing before dictating his matchups. It could have been Topolsky or Earhart Cap marking Grinitza. We've got our first foul of the game. 
And it goes on Rojas. Yeah, it's against Manny Rojas. Remember, six fouls, and it's a bench penalty. And the Chicago, number one in the MISL in the number of penalties that they have taken. Unfortunately for the other teams, they're also number one in penalty killing. Carl Heinz Granitza led the league in scoring most of the year. He's now second to Jungle. Turlucky to the right. Jose Morera, one of the newcomers to the Chicago team, is beaten by Turlucky. He takes the shot, but it was blocked by Spalding. He actually never saw it, just got a piece of it. Sting bring it back. This is another newcomer, Andrew Parkinson, who played for the Cosmos with Mark Leverage. Upfield for Grinitza. Jose Morera. I don't know where that one was going. Neither did Jose. He hooked it slightly. <laughs> yeah, very slightly. Scoreless opening quarter, 13-15 to go. And both teams trying to get some fresh troops out there. Sibby's holding the ball. When you see a player hold the ball that way, you can more or less expect that there's a line change, and that's what was going on there. Earhart Cap almost lost it. You would have seen Lasha walk in on goal. Lead ball for Child. Paul Child, who sat out the last game, plays it for Hagen. Hagen will play as a midfielder when he's used in a line with Child and Leverage. Gordon Smith on defense with Earhart Cap. Upfield Hagen. In the attack zone, he'll hold it. Is pressured by Dan Cantor, who's playing way upfield. Now it's sent back to the midfield line. This is going to be interesting if Hagen plays as a midfielder and draws Cantor as a man to watch him. Chicago smacks the ball out of play. We go to a break. No score. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Making on. Made the trip to Chicago Cameron. Stadium. A lot of black and gold down there. Uh, Chicago uniforms, except for the fact that they have the black sleeves, are very similar, of course, to the Pittsburgh Spirit. The ball is played right through. No harm done. And McGuire is up and throwing it long. Chicago looking to go two on one. Smith got a piece of it. It's played into the box, and Moblick is there. Looked like uh, potential danger on both sides of the field, but nothing happens. Not even really a shot on goal on either side in that particular case. Well, Chicago can score 210 goals this year, an average of. 5.81 coming in. So they like to put it in the net, and they do so very well. There's Paul Child, picks up the first foul on Pittsburgh. Child tried to take the ball away from Mark Simonton. It was Simonton who collided with Earhart Cap that caused Earhart's injury when they both went up for the ball. Child knocking it to the left. Leverage trying to get off a big shot. Simonton blocks that. Hagen back for Leverage. Mark holding it. Left puts it right side for Gordon Smith. Quickly up the boards. Child couldn't get enough on it. He was tightly marked by Jose Morera. Neguera will roll it now for Dan Cantor, former Cosmo. He got out just in time in a trade for Robert Meshback about a week or so before the Cosmos went under. Hagen leading it for Leverage. There's his former teammate Cantor trying to pick him up. Mark cuts it to the inside. Right side ball for Hagen. A shot blocked. That looked like a great setup for Pittsburgh. It did. I don't think Dave could settle it quite the way he wanted, and he didn't take control of it early enough, and that was the reason he didn't get off a good shot. Tap off the boards. Pittsburgh going to a line change. Franz Matthew. Five times Matthew has been named the defensive player of the game this season. He's a great defender whether he plays indoors or out. Ball played on the right side to Val Fernandez. Give and go from Rojas to the left. Victor Moreland cranks it up off the fingertips of Boblik. That was uh, the better or the best shot of the afternoon so far. Rojas hooks it way wide. Moreland coming in. Kapka dumps a foul on Z Kapka. Not much question about that. Z got him with the body as he tried to take it in. Chicago now applying a little bit of pressure here. There's the foul. He goes against Z Kapka. Second foul on Pittsburgh. As we come back live, Peter Moblick makes an easy save on a Victor Moreland shot. Topolsky running it ahead off the left wing boards for Tulecki, way too far in front of him. Naguera communication problem with Fernandez. It comes out to Tulecki, out to the left point. O'Hara was playing too far back, but look at the recovery he makes. Well, fortunately, Rojas wasn't able to make his run once he got past O'Hara, and the Spirit got the ball back. Kapka for Tulecki. Franz Matthew may be on him all day, and hopefully he won't do that. As he got by Stan, Stan had to trip him to get back into the play, but Matthew made a great play to just take the ball away from Stan. He is one of the league's better man-on-man -man markers. Fernandez up the field for Grinitza, the man we talked about during the pregame show. On the left side, Neil Roberts on the overlap. In a corner. Blocked by Captain O'Hara, bangs it off the boards. Chicago keeps it alive. Matthew pokes it back to Val Fernandez. Terlecki on the chase. Kick back to Naguera. We may see it this afternoon. Aguero likes to come out of that goal quite a bit. Fernandez, right wing. Off the boards. Mavic didn't get enough. It's coming out to Rojas. Kapka blocks it. On the left wing side. Off the boards for Granitza. Wants to turn. There's a whistle and a foul. 
That will go on Carl Heinz Granitza. Yep. Carl doesn't think so, but that's going against him regardless. And that will be two fouls for the Sting. Three for Pittsburgh early in the opening quarter. It is still scoreless. Ian Sibby's getting the Topolsky feed upfield. Same two teams tomorrow back at the Civic Arena. That's a 2.05 kickoff. We hope to see you there. As that ends a six-game and nine-day trip for Pittsburgh. Charlucky holding it for Sibby's. Ian back for Stan Charlucky. Stan, the leading scorer on the spirit, trying to get by Matthew. Good individual effort. Takes it to the board. Played it in front one at Sibby's, but it was not a good pass. O'Hara keeps it alive. Sibby's on a give and go. He'll take it off the board. Look who's open. Hoggett scores! Dave Hoggett from John O'Hara. Ian Sibby's is limping right now. We'll have to see if he is hurt. But the Spirit take a 1-0 lead. A beautiful effort on the part of the Spirit. It comes at 449. Watch what O'Hara does. Took a quick look. Drove it right over to Hagen, and he had all the left side of the net to shoot at, and the Pittsburgh Spirit take the lead. Time of the goal is going to be 5 minutes and 49 seconds of this, the opening quarter. As we look once more, Hagen beating Aguirre to the inside post. And for Dave Hagen, that is goal number 26 of the season. And Johnny has now scored in a goal in five straight games. We still joke with him before the game, hey, this one's on TV, get one. He says, no problem, and he usually gets them on TV. Indeed he does, and a good start for the Spirit. I asked him earlier this year, I said, how about some radio goals? <laughs> Off the boards, Gordon Smith banging with Lasha. Surprised no foul called on either side. Now there's one. That's on Pittsburgh, that's four. Last Jeff on the set play. Here's where Pittsburgh has had problems this season. This could be one, but Spalding cranks it wide. Child was pushed by Neil Roberts. That's a crazy foul for Chicago to take. Because the ball wasn't even close. No, you're right. Up for leverage. one nothing Spirit leading it for Child. Off the boards. Child trying to get into it. Where he knocked it free, and Hagen just couldn't quite get it. Great hustle from Paul Child. Back comes Andrew Parkinson. A one of things Spirit lead Hoggins 26th of the year at 549 from John O'Hara. Keep in mind, as long as that keeper doesn't have control of the ball, you can go after him. That's exactly what Paul Child did. Cap in trying to get that ball, unfortunately, couldn't maintain his balance, or Pittsburgh could have broke with a couple of players on one. Child now will intercept. Good work so far by the Spirit. They're all Hoggins. working hard. Look at Child open. Somebody back home, Russ Redshaw, is probably spending that grocery money. Child is the person that Russ Redshaw has chosen in the Giant Eagle Goal Getter Contest. Thought we had a winner there, John. I did, too. Spalding from way out into the corner for last Jeff. Wants to send it in, but it's deflected back out. Jose Moreira broken up from behind by Child. Good work rate from Paul Child, especially on this ship. Hagen will slow it down as Pittsburgh wants to change. And now John Kowalski brings out Charlie Green to try and take advantage of Charlie's speed, maybe open it up a little bit. And force Chicago into some changes defensively. Now Simonton will intercept the pass. Parkinson on the run. A one I think Pittsburgh lead. That almost tied it. Malvin with his best save of the afternoon. Off the boards. It hits Jeter DiPolito. Green, good work to clear it out of the zone. Ball cleared up field. Charlie, good hustle to come back and win the ball. He's on the line with Franz Sock and Stan Terlecki. This would be about as fast a trio as Pittsburgh could put out on the field. They do not have team speed. That's been one of their problems this season, but they have three guys that can run out there right now. Terlecki, tightly marked. Going to call a foul on Stan from behind, and that is foul number five with 6.57 to play in the opening quarter. Spirit leading 1 0, but that's where the six foul rule could come in. Ball played up for Granitza. Topolsky has had him all afternoon but it's not been much of an afternoon so far, only eight minutes. He can mark Carl Hines out of a game for most of the game. He can beat you in the last minute. Here's a Simon and shot blocked by John O'Hara. All the way back from its own momentum. Morera to Naguera. Now Hayden Knight. Back comes Jose Morera. To the far boards for Granitza. Good toe ball for Simonson gets free for Morera. Shooting it wide again, but Granitz is there. His shot, and he just missed the far post. Looked oh, like there was a strong there. shot, I'll tell you, from with his left foot. Didn't look like a great angle, but that's where the great goal scorers can put him in from any place out on the field. Franz Sock coming back the other way. Four to Lucky. Two goals, three assists the other night for Stan. Lead ball, Sock, and he shoots it into the crowd. That's a commercial shot. We'll take it. What do you think, Pittsburgh? You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer by the number of penalties that they have, but uh, that's because they go up and down the floor at a rapid rate. 
Liverich. And that's probably also because he got caught more than somebody else. <laughs> that's why Willie Roy was upset at officials earlier in the season. Hagen getting it. And he also really got it from behind by Moreland. Played to Liverich. Mark for Hagen. Good give and go. Mark shot almost scores on the short side. He'll get it in the goal box area. But no luck at all. And this ball is cleared out. And Paul Child was in so deep that the ball went behind him out on the field of play. That's a good shot by Liverich. He almost got the short side. Now Matthew will hold on to the ball. Sees that line change coming. Neil Roberts, right side. Pat McGauley. Outside the box, drills one. Malva couldn't get his hands on it. O'Hara trying to get it out, and now Hagen does. We remind you that this broadcast is intended for the private use of our viewing audience, and any rebroadcast, reproduction, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Civic Arena Corporation and the Spirit is prohibited. Civis and Tulecki, nice to see Ian back out of the field. He's been durable this year. Stands open, but that pass is blocked. Ian will try it again. O'Hara holding it. Waits for Tulecki to make a move. Flicks it to Stan. Stan flicks the other way. Nobody was breaking that side. Kapka did a nice job. Maybe too nice. That's the sixth foul. That is the sixth foul as Kapka tried to come from behind and get it. Finally, the official in the box sees that it is. So that sixth foul will come against the Pittsburgh spirit, and it means a power play. And with the Chicago Sting coming on the power play, we'll bring it to you when we come back. One nothing Pittsburgh, you're watching. Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. So hold up. Go on. Lighten the load. Lighten the load. Go down the trunk. They're catching up. Get rid of the strows. Get rid of the strows. Good thinking, Bart. Yep. Strohs and Stroh Light. Fire brewed for smoother taste. We're back as Chicago has the power play. Kuditz is blocked. First shift of the afternoon for Kevin Moore and Dave McKenzie. Alongside them are John O'Hara and Earhart Cap. Spirit are leading it 1-0. Man advantage for the Sting. Manny Rojas bringing it forward. 40-footer blocked by O'Hara. Good thing Lasher was open. Lasher in the corner. He leads the club with eight power play goals. Out to Granitza. Left side, Rojas smacks it into the crowd. So Pittsburgh can settle their thoughts down. A minute 28 left on the man advantage for Chicago. And Chicago's power play goal situation, much like Pittsburgh, they've scored 20 out of 62. That's a 32% average. Spirit have given up 25 power play goals in 73 opportunities. They've been killing them off at almost a 67% rate thus far. You know, Pittsburgh started out the week in 10th place on the power play. That's a false start. They'll do it again. They've climbed up to approximately fourth. And we say approximately because we don't know what some of the other teams may have done this week. They've had a couple of games in which they've managed to get some nice power play goals. They were two for two last night. Ball played up field now for Kevin Barr intercept. Spalding. Running against Marr. Bad pass, and O'Hara's right there to clear it. Good play, too, by Johnny. He didn't panic. That didn't go over three lines. It went off the boards and then over three lines, which is okay. So it kills off more time. Less than a minute to go on the power play. one nothing Pittsburgh leading it on a Hagen goal from O'Hara. Last year shooting it. Moblin missed it. Took a hop off the boards. Chicago will control. Spalding out to Granitza. Right side for Parkinson. Last year, left side, he wanted somebody open. Now it is Roberts. Back out to Granitz at the left point. He's going to blast. Bob, look at diving play to make the stop. Oh, he has a strong shot. You got to be acrobatic, I think, any time you stop a shot from Granitz. Here's Lashev cutting it back. Quick shot blocked by Earhart Cap, cleared away by McKenzie off the Parkinson foot. And we've got a foul call on the sting. And there's still plenty of time, almost two and a half minutes in this uh, period. And uh, the sting up to four now, as far as fouls are concerned. John O'Hara bangs it back to Peter Moblick. Right back to John O'Hara. Beating Lashev, now he'll stop. Four years in a row, Lashev has scored 20 goals or more. A consistent player. He is of Russian origin. Moblick comes out and blasts. I was going to say. I think Peter I got a little panic. panicky over there. I decided, hey. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope this is not a mistake, I was about to say. And then he... I think he thought the same thing and just said, get that ball out of here. Eight seconds left in the power play. Trelecki is serving it, so Chicago's got to watch out with him coming out. On the left side, it's played into the box. Cap blocks it. O'Hara will take it. Johnny smacks it upfield. Off the boards. That should do it. And it does. A great job of penalty killing by this unit. 
especially when you consider it was the first shift for McKenzie and Mark. Lasha now coming back. He's free for the moment, and he scores. I believe Peter Boblik may have been screened on that shot. In any event, that's the danger of working as hard as you can at a power play. Sometimes John Sanders, when it's over, disaster strikes. Well, watch Lashev hesitates a minute, then brings it right across the box. O'Hara tries to make the tackle and can't. There's the quick shot, and that is the goal that ties the game. Another angle is he O'Hara goes down trying to make the tackle but can't catch up. That gives him the fraction of a second that Mike Lashev needs to put it in. Lashev's goal is 21st goal of the season. It will come at the 13 minute five second mark of the opening quarter. Pittsburgh had just killed off the penalty and they were unable to make any changes in the lineup. So O'Hara's out there. He's going to be tired. A couple of other players, same situation. And Chicago takes advantage. On that assist, give it to Granitza. He breaks a Chicago Sting record of 41 that he had. He had tied with former Sting player Ingo Peter, who is now playing overseas. So the Sting tie it at one, not a power play goal. It came right after. You may have seen in the monitor, Stan Trelecki had been back, and we had told you that anyway. So. Well, that's the problem, though. Up. You know, you, you tend to relax. You've just done a great job for two minutes. Uh, you're, you've been really intense, active, and all of a sudden uh, let down just a hair, and it cost you. Yeah, and it's not just a problem for Pittsburgh. I'm sure it happens all over the league. General tendency to let down a little bit. Good ball, Gordon Smith to Topolsky. Simbies breaks for goal. Cap the wide open on the right. Adam will give it to Z. Smacks it hard, but it's blocked. Loose in the box. Terlecki rolls it for Topolsky. Back for Terlecki. He'll hold. In the box, Simbies has the goalkeeper out. Off the boards, nobody there. Rudy Glenn. Well, take it. I'll tell you what, that was a great pass from Stan Terlecki to Ian Simbies. Yep. I thought he was going to shoot it. And I think uh, Naguera did as well. And he almost got caught. Simmons was at a difficult angle, so he played it. It looked like off the boards purposely, but nobody was there to follow it up. Terlecki on the far boards. The way he just spun that ball away from Simon to, was a thing of beauty. He's got three players on him. Somebody's open. He finds Topolsky. Out of May Crank, he does. Headed away by Dan Canner. Topolsky back up. The Guerra punches it out. It's getting rougher in that box area. Now Glenn is taken down. No fouls. Glenn gets back up. That's a foul for pushing. On Z Kapka, seven spirit fouls, four on the Chicago Sting. And if we get to nine, it'll be another bench penalty against Pittsburgh, but we only have 20 seconds left. Ball is played upfield for Dan Cantor. Leading it the other way for Lashev. He has the tying goal for Morera. Back off the boards, Lashev holding it. Captain Smith of the defenders, Franz Sock now out there, along with Trelecki and Sibbies. The ball played back, Simonton. One second, that's it. The screaming siren, I guess you'd have to call it, ends the opening quarter. It is Pittsburgh 1, Chicago 1. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Burger King breaks it to McDonald's. Gently. We're so sorry, we're so sorry. McDonald's, McDonald's. Chris Amish beat the stuffing out of Egg McMuffin. Two, two, one, two, two, one. In a nationwide test, our flaky Chris sandwich with golden eggs and melted cheese, sausage, bacon, or ham, beat the stuffing out of Egg McMuffin with the best taste. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? Now, Diet Coke has 100% NutraSweet, and the taste is truly one of a kind. Let's go Set NutraSweet. Now, most folks will venture as far as that canyon down there. For some of us, there are no limits. A lot of cereals seem to go the distance for a lot of folks, too. Grape nut cereal takes breakfast where I want it to go. All the way to all natural. No added sugar, nothing artificial. Wheat and barley for goodness in every crunch. See, there's no question grape nuts is right for you. Question is... Are you right for grape nuts? 
The time's right to do it right. Do it yourself and save with Whitlock Auto. This week, save on Westinghouse halogen sealed beams. Only $3.97 with manufacturer's rebate. Tempo 20-ounce rubberized undercoat. Only $1.17. Omega Primer. Red Sense. And our own heavy-duty shocks. A low, low $5.77 each. So do it right. Do it yourself and save with Whitlock Auto. Open seven days a week and evenings, too. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. We have played the first 15 minutes. It's 1-1. Here's how the Pittsburgh Spirits scored. Uh, John O'Hara will get the ball back in the corner, brings it right across to Dave Hagen, and he has a lot of room on the left side. Dave puts it away. Hagen's goal came at 5:49, his 26th of the year on a feed from John O'Hara. We look at it one more time. Beautiful pass, a well-played goal. That lead lasted for about eight minutes before Chicago came back to tie it up. And here's that play. Carl Heinz Granitza is going to play it long for last year, and then it's all individual effort. Keep in mind, this was right after Pittsburgh had killed off and done a great job in killing off a Chicago power play. Lasher gets free for the moment. His shot, we see it at the end. I think Peter was screened by John O'Hara, although we won't see it from that angle. You can't tell this way. There's Johnny going down. You see where Lasher's left foot met the ball, and O'Hara's right foot was down on the ground, and Peter may have lost it for a slight instant there. There was no goal-getter winner in that first quarter. In the second quarter, Christian Pelusi has chosen Dave Hagen, and hopefully she's not a quarter too late. And here to carry you through the second quarter of play with a score tied at one, we go to John Sanders. And the home team kicking off in the second and fourth quarters. That'll be the Chicago Sting in this case. So the Sting control, Lashev goes down. And we have the first foul of the second quarter. Pittsburgh served a bench penalty for too many fouls in the opening quarter of play. And they get their first one here in the second quarter. 1-1 on the scoreboard. Right in front. Parkinson cutting across. Smith trying to clear. Comes back the other way over the glass and out of play. Right now for Pittsburgh, Mark Liverich is on. Paul Child, Dave Hagen. Earhart cap and with the ball is ball Gordon Smith. So the Spirit will put it into play. We're just underway in the second quarter this afternoon from Chicago. Same teams back in the Civic Arena tomorrow afternoon. 2.05 will be the kickoff there. Lashev, well downfield, trying to mark Gordon Smith right at the Pittsburgh red line. And Gordon will take it back once again to Peter Moblick. There's Lashev. Now Earhart Kapp trying to get something going offensively. A lot of forechecking going on right now by Chicago. It was not the way Chicago played in the first quarter. They gave Pittsburgh a lot more room. Willie Roy must have said to tighten it up, and they're picking up Pittsburgh at the spirit red line, so that's high-pressure defense. Leverage. Cap will move it back all the way to the Pittsburgh end where Peter Movlik tracks it down. We have played one minute of the second quarter. We're tied at one here in Chicago Stadium. Glad to have you with us on a Saturday afternoon. And remember, basketball coming right back at you as soon as, soon as we are finished here. NCAA playoff action continues. So a big afternoon of sports. Earhart Cap. Hagen tackled away from him. And then Hagen drives it back to Victor Naguera, the goalkeeper. Jose Marrera is on right now. That's Dan Cantor. Drops it in the corner. Fernandez. All the way back out now to Matthew. Granitza goes down. Fernandez picks it up. It's a drive on, and the save is made by Moblik. Here comes Terlecki on a run. Stan now stops. Starts up again. Fernandez can't stop him. Child in front trying to get a foot on it and can't. That's a good call. Paul Child pushed the player down in front as he tried to get that ball. But a nice effort from Stan Trelecki to get in the ball. On that last shift, we saw Gordon Smith on Grunitsa. First time in the afternoon that Topolsky wasn't there. But now Pittsburgh has made a change. Trelecki banging in the corner. Nothing called. Here's Grunitsa. Tackled away from him. Outside now. Rojas with a drive. It's knocked down by John O'Hara. And that call goes against Zeke Kapka. So quickly, the Spirit getting in foul trouble again. That's three already. Matthew. Goes far side now. Rudy Glenn. Granitza with his back to the goal. Back to Glenn. It comes across the goal mouth. And that time, the call goes against Manny Rojas. 
So that's the first foul against Chicago, and this is the second quarter of play. Stan Terlecki has it near midfield. Moves it to John O'Hara. 1 1 is our score. 12 minutes and 18 seconds remaining. We're in the first half of play. The Spirit trying to win for only the fourth time on the road this year. Looking for win number 16. A victory also key in the playoff race because if the Spirit can win this one, they'll be within a half game of Kansas City for that last playoff spot. Kopelski decides not to chase it down. Matthew Will for Chicago. He's going to save his work rate for defense for Gunitsa. Rojas now starts back for Chicago. Looking for Carl Heinz Granitza. Carl Heinz, by the way, will be on at halftime. Good feed from Granitza. And picking it up is Peter Moblik. Made a good pass that time to Magali. Some open room for Zeke Kapka. Coming for Ian Sibby. Ian will settle now. Terlecki in the middle. Stan has it. Matthew marking him. He comes back to the red line. Now goes around Matthew. Looking for Sibbies. Kapka has it. Back to Sibbies. To Kapka on the give and go. There's the save. A rebound by Sibbies is in. And the Pittsburgh Spirit take the lead. Sibbies from Zeke Kapka, and again, the work rate continues. That's all that that was. Pittsburgh just outworked Chicago to the ball. We'll get another chance to see Ian Sibbies score the goal. Look at Sibbies, two players going to him. Kapka was open. The key to this is he got the good shot away, and that's something Pittsburgh has not had much of this year, rebound goals. Usually those goalkeepers have not been tested as hard as Pittsburgh would have liked to. And that ball just doesn't seem to come back. Here it does. Sibbies right there where he should be on the doorstep. And for Ian Sibbies, his hot streak continues. He has 29 goals, but he has now scored 18 points in his last 11 games. So the Spirit back on top, 2-1. to one. The goal comes at 3.59. Kapka getting his 10th assist. And the key there was Sibbies kept running, kept moving to the ball, moving toward the goal, and the ball came back to him. So now the Spirit back on top. Pittsburgh goal is 29 of the season. Smart runner number 19. Drive comes in front. Lashev will move it in. He has one goal already and is taken away by Hagen. Hagen. Tiller. Leverage. To Hagen. He's got some room. He just missed the right post. Beautiful feed that time from Leverage. Hagen could not quite capitalize on it. Dave had a chance. Uses the board. Back in front for Leverage. They battle in the corner. The call will go against Dave Hagen. Hagen battling Derek Spradling there. Now those are the kind of things that really hurt you in a game, too, John, because there's Pittsburgh with two chances. Those are momentum plays because if Pittsburgh scores there, they're getting two goals in the space of 30 seconds. Maybe Willie Roy calls a timeout as we look at the foul. That looked like it was more Chicago than Pittsburgh on the replay. Roberts on a run. Off the glass. Lashev will try to settle down. Gordon Smith will come out. Try to clear it away. And Sting now had this, the pressure on the spirit, but Child trying to come up with it. Does and goes down. He's that's tackled by Derek Spaulding. That's two. It is a two-minute penalty against Derek Spaulding. And the reason was Child should have had him beaten with him. It's two to one spirit. Spirit will have the power play. When we come back, you are watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. A lot of kids like Jenny are getting the room they've always wanted because there's Melon. If you need a loan for an extra room or for anything else, talk to Melon. <laughs> Melon Bank, our neighbor you can count on. We're going to show you what happens here, and here's why they call the penalty. It would have been probably just a foul, but there. Child would have been behind his player. Sometimes they'll call it a foul, but in that case, it's so flagrant because the player, in this case, Child, would have been off to the races. You've got to call it, too. Spirit? 23 out of 71 on the power play this year. That's 32.4 percent. They have Terlecki on with Sibbies. Hagen with the ball right now. Mark Liverich on the left side looking for Paul Child as Stan tried to chip a quick one in there and see if he could get some room for Paul Child. He cannot do it. We have 9.38 to play. The Spirit leading 2-1 to one and controlling on the power play. Hagen has a goal. Ian Sibbies has a goal. 
Mike Lashev scored the goal for Chicago. John Paul mentioned the ability of the Spirit to kill off penalties. They've only given up 20 power play goals in 85 situations. So that's a 76 and a half percent average in killing off those penalties. That's outstanding. Stan Terlecki will dodge the paper airplane that's on the field. For Sibbies. Settles, brings it back to Terlecki. A little room in front, but Stan couldn't settle the ball. Had a little bit of an opening that time as they shifted the zone defense away from him. Stan turning. There's a drive by Liverage off the glass. Settles down in front. Tries to get it back and can't. Controlled by Fernandez. Running ahead of Fernandez is Symington. But the Spirit come back to take over. John, Chicago has killed off 24 power play opportunities out of their last 28. So that's even better than the, the overall projections that they have for the year. Liverage wants Stan to move up closer to the goal. Stan goes to Liverage. Fakes a drive. Now goes to Hagen with a little room off the boards in front. It comes for Child. Back to Hagen for Liverage. Knocked away from him by Fernandez. But Terlecki will get there with 12 seconds left in the penalty. Stan stops, doesn't shoot. For Sibbies. Can't control. Fernandez. Terlecki. The penalty is over. Child now. Settles, drives it off the glass. Hagen looking for the rebound. Just missed Sibbies on a deflection in front. Here's Liverage with a drive, misses to the left side. And finally, the Chicago Sting, Derek Spaulding, who's back on, cannot clear. Here's one more opportunity. Finally, Chicago takes over, and this time they will clear it out of there. Spaulding, who was in the penalty box with a drive, misses to the right side. Granitza chasing it down. Child there. Paul goes to Hagen. 7-20 left in the first half. 2-1, to one, the Pittsburgh Spirit leading here in Chicago Stadium. You can see Hagen taking his time because the Spirit changing players on the fly. Terlecki has been on a long time. So has Hagen. They were both out on the power play. Each team has been able to kill off a power play thus far. Looking for Sibbies, who's also been on a while. Kapka now back on. Here's John O'Hara. Adam Topolsky on the far side gets the ball. But Sibbies right at the top of the circle goes all the way across to Z Kapka. Kapka to Terlecki. Back heel to Kapka with a shot in front looking for Sibbies. He went down. Terlecki retrieves for Pittsburgh. Starts one way, goes the other, and he cannot bring it back across. Z Kapka tries to get it back. Here's Sibbies with a chance to Kapka looking for Terlecki in front. Good offensive attack right now for Pittsburgh. They've got everything their way. O'Hara drive. And a brilliant save that time by Naguera. Just got be, his hand down in time. It's got to be frustrating. Terlecki made one of the better back heel passes you'll see. Now a chance. Knight moves it across. Tries to go on the corner. Picked up there by Roberts. And now Sibbies. Sibbies has really been out there a long time. Granica against Topolsky. Controlled by Hayden Knight. All the way back to Franz Matthew. This is Knight. Looking for Gr Granica. Matthew a drive. Misses to the right side. A hard shot. Marrero will chase it down. Jose Marrero. Knocked down in front by Sibbies. O'Hara goes after the tackle. It clears three lines. We'll have a stoppage in play with 5.39 left in the first half. Stan Terlecki is out there. Sibbies is out there. Seems like they've been on forever. It's at least a three-minute shift because of that power play. Back it comes. Dan Cantor takes over for Chicago. Tackled away from him, but Terlecki can't get there in time. Sibbies and Terlecki have been on a long time. Spirit leading 2-1. to one. Five minutes, 25 seconds left in the first half. Ian Sibbies with the only Pittsburgh goal. Granitza with a chance and diving out to make the save is Peter Mobley. Back comes Adam Topolsky on a run as he crosses midfield. Parkinson moves back to slow him down. Now O'Hara will start a run. And Topolsky settles the ball down. 5.05 left first half. If Topolsky goes forward, you watch O'Hara will definitely stay back. Sometimes earlier in the season, Pittsburgh got caught with both defenders up, but they know the responsibility to watch Granitza, so they will both not go forward at the same time. Carl Hines, Granitza, dumps it in the corner, looking for Parkinson. He settles. Falling down. 
is Victor Moreland attempting to come up with the ball. Drive missing to the left side by Spaulding. That one goes high into the air. O'Hara heads it out of there. Spaulding keeps it in, and John O'Hara again comes back with a header. Marrero now will settle. This is Spaulding. Headed away by Kapka. Marrero. Off the boards, and all the way back across off the foot of Parkinson. Terlecki moved it a little bit too far. Spaulding picks it off. Tackled brilliantly that time by Topolsky against Lashev, but controlled now by Moreland. Charlie Green on. Terlecki knocks him down. That'll be a foul on Pittsburgh. That's five. Back it comes to Spaulding. His drive knocked high in the air by Kapka. Out of play with 345 left in the half. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. South Carolina. Come on. Smiling faces. South Carolina. It's waiting. Beautiful places. South Carolina. The vacation you're looking for. South Carolina. Smiling faces. Beautiful faces. What are you waiting for? South Carolina. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. 3.45 left in the first half. 2-1, the Spirit leading. Lashev trying to put it in play in front. Charlie Green is there, along with Liveridge. At the red line, Franz Sock now controls for Pittsburgh, looking for Green. Back it comes to Cap. It's on with Gordon Smith. Good move by Liveridge. Drive and a save made. Green can't follow. Sock now in the corner. Liverage shot can do. It can force a lot of rebounds. John Kowalski shifting up a little bit with Liverage, Green, and Sock. Sock will be in the midfield. All the way out to boot it away is Moblik, but the Sting still control. Now it's taken over by Pittsburgh. Sock with it. He's got Charlie Green on the left side ahead. Charlie in the corner off the boards, looking for a rebound. Nobody there. Went right through the legs of Symington. And back come the Chicago Sting. Running down the left side, Parkinson. Smith trying to clear, and it kicks loose. Right out in front. Finally driven back to midfield. Good hustle and aggressiveness by Gordon Smith to clear it away. There was some confusion in that box area here in front. Sock got too close together, but Gordon made a nice recovery. 2.37 left in the half. Drive misses high off the glass to the left by Rudy Glenn. Spalding now. Lashev, and that call will go against Pittsburgh. That is number six. So for the second straight quarter, the Pittsburgh Spirit will have a bench penalty. It's two to one. The Spirit leading. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Burger King does it again. Perhaps you think we're reminding you that the Whopper beat the Big Mac, right? Really, now, would Burger King do that? Sure we would. But this time, it's breakfast. Because our croissant sandwich just beat the stuffing out of Egg McMuffin two to one for best taste. Our flaky croissant filled with golden eggs, melted cheese, and sausage, bacon, or ham. First the Whopper, now the croissant sandwich. Well, win a few, win a few. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? And the officials will talk it over, and we'll have a little pause here because Chicago has just taken a timeout with 2.28 to play. Shots on goal in the first period were even at 6-6. It's been a very physical game. Interestingly, from an officiating standpoint, at times they've really let them bang and play, and at times they've called it. Uh, it seems like the more bodies uh, get together, the, the rougher the play gets, and they usually let it go on. But for the second straight quarter, the Spirit will serve out a bench penalty leading 2-1. to one. I think that's why John O'Hara was arguing it at that whistle because of uh, just what you're saying, John. would like to remind our, our viewing audience that this is your chance to save big on upcoming Spirit Thursday night games. The early 7.30 starting time means that you can get home much earlier. You can still save $3 off the box office price of an $11 or $9 ticket choose from the following remaining games Thursday April 4th versus Las Vegas Thursday April 11th versus Baltimore call right now if you've got a MasterCard or Visa card 642-2067 642-2067 once more John Sanders the Pittsburgh penalty killers face the test remember the last time they killed off the penalty but seconds after that maybe because of fatigue they couldn't get players off the field Chicago capitalized on Lashev's goal 
Willie Roy right there on the left with the tie as the coach of Chicago in the MISL his record is 51 and 36 overall indoors 102 wins 68 defeats He's the only person that we know of who has been both the rookie of the year and the coach of the year in the NASL he was rookie of the year in 67 coach of the year in 81 there's a drive the first attempt Granitza settles he shoots knocked down in front by O'Hara spirit trying to kill kill off this penalty Kevin Marr, who has two shorthanded goals this year, tries to get to it and can't quite make it. Battling hard against the keeper, Victor Negrero. Now they're going to call a foul on Kevin Marr, and he's upset. I'll tell you what's wrong with that. Right before that, after Kevin banged the ball off the boards, you could see Negrero reach his arm out and hold Kevin Marr after Kevin had taken the shot away. They didn't call that one, but they got Kevin the other way. Granitza, is it to Lashev? Comes to Parkinson. Back to Carl Hines with a drive knocked down by Cap. Was over the glass and out of play. In the penalty, a minute 23. In the period, a minute 51. Also, now the spirit was 17 fouls. If they get too aggressive out there, we could have nine. And if we get another foul, it would carry over to the third quarter. Here's where it's tough trying to mark Grenitza on a power play because you're already down a man. It's not like a normal situation where you say to Adam Topolsky, here's your assignment, you watch Grenitza. Instead, Pittsburgh will play either in a box situation or a diamond situation or formation. They will shift. You'll see a lot of movement depending on where that ball goes, but that's where Grenitza can be very dangerous. Not only is he a great finisher, he passes the ball extremely well. Rojas on with Granitza. They move it to the right side. A drive is knocked down in front. Spalding gets it back to Granitza. His shot is deflected by Dave McKenzie and goes over the glass. So it'll be put in play by Rojas with a minute 39 left in the first half. Two to one, the spirit leading on the strength of goals by Hagen and Civis. Mike Lashev scored the only goal for Chicago. And Granitza picked up an assist so far, so he keeps his string going. He scored 10 points altogether in the first two and a half games against Pittsburgh. Rojas. Working with Granitza. Move it all the way across to Spalding. His drive off the glass comes to Kevin Marr. Kevin to Cap. Little room on the right side now for Dave McKenzie. McKenzie using the boards. Nobody there for the rebound. Rojas picks it off. 42 seconds left. A break for Chicago as they come back quickly. Lashev settles. Spalding shot misses. Granitza can't score. Rojas there, but McKenzie drives it back to midfield. It'll go to Spalding again with 24 seconds left in the bench penalty being served by Stan Terlecki. Rojas. Lash up a drive, misses to the right side. Granitza drive, misses the other way. Mark can't clear. Rojas to Granitza. Granitza's shot is deflected in front by Johnny O'Hara, comes back to midfield. Seven seconds left in the penalty. One more chance here for Chicago on the power play. Lashev uses the boards. Granitza trying to follow, can't get there. The penalty is over as the ball is deflected back to the red line. Terlecki is on. He's got a chance. Sand can't get there ahead of Maguero. There's a delayed penalty that was called, too. I didn't catch who was on with Simmies clapping. We're assuming that they got Chicago, and they had to because Chicago got possession of the ball, and once they did, then the whistle sounded. I don't know if we'll see anything on a replay here, John, but there's, uh, there's what we missed. Coming back, Cap is fouled on the play. Well, that was it. They were calling a delayed penalty there on that situation, so maybe that kind of evens things out. They did not call a foul. They called it a penalty, so Pittsburgh will have a power play opportunity. I was about to mention before, as we look at Mike Lashev going to the box, John O'Hara, even though Lashev had beaten him on that uh, first goal for Chicago and only goal, I think he's had a great game. He's blocked a number of passes and also blocked quite a few shots, although the official score may not give him credit for it. Here's another look. Lashev, I thought he got a piece of the ball, but look what happens afterwards. Earhart goes flying, and Pittsburgh gets two, and they will use this opportunity as we look at Willie Roy there to call a timeout. Willie's, uh, if you're a great lip reader, you just heard some great language back at home. He's not at all pleased with the officials. Well, I think he has some, maybe some legitimate complaint there because he was going for the ball, made the tackle, so. and yep. the collision occurred basically after that. Still 21 seconds left and a chance maybe for Pittsburgh because, remember, this penalty will carry over into the third quarter. I'd like to remind everyone that the Spirit take on the Kansas City Comets. That's our next televised game here on TV2. Sunday, March 31st, we return to John Sanders' former television territory, Kansas City. That'll be fun, and of course a very critical game as far as the playoffs are concerned. And also keep in mind that we'll be going back to NCAA basketball following this soccer game. Terlecki into the corner, a shot, a save is made by Negrero. He'll run it out of there. 
Good effort. Fernandez chasing, got a man open, trailing. Moblick comes out, and that's it. Very interesting move by the goalkeeper, Naguero. Gets his team out of a hole, but we'll go to halftime here with the Pittsburgh Spirit leading by a score of 2-1. to one. We'll be back to Chicago. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. The biggest bottle of Coke around. Hey, you don't want to run out of Coca-Cola. Get Thirst Buster and save. I ain't afraid of no thirst. We go call Thirst Buster. Ever try to return something and get the runaround? Look, sweetie, you need three forms of ID, a notarized receipt, a note from your doctor, your well, mom. With Thrift Drug, we guarantee all 800 of our Treasury brand products. If you're dissatisfied with any Treasury brand product for any reason, your razors works a little. Too well. We'll nice. give you your money back on the spot. 100% guaranteed. Treasury brand products only at Thrift Drug. Hot legs are back. It's all the hot times, all the hot action of the major indoor soccer league with your red hot team spirit. Sunday, the first 7,500 fans get a handsome spirit drinking mug from Icy Light. See the spirit sting Chicago this Sunday and say, give me an Icy Light mug. Hot legs are back. Pittsburgh spirit indoor soccer. The leather makers has brought thousands of leather coats and jackets to the Holiday House in Monroeville. For three weeks only, you can get big savings on men's and women's leather coats and jackets in many styles, dozens of colors, and big and tall sizes. All are genuine leather, some genuine suede, and prices begin at just $49. But hurry, the leather maker sale lasts from February 27th to March 17th at the Holiday House in Monroeville. Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sundays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium, where we're at halftime, and the Pittsburgh Spirit leading the Chicago Sting 2-1. to one. I'm John Sanders, along with John Paul Della Camera. A very interesting and, I think, well-played first half. I guess I was kind of surprised. I didn't see the game on Thursday, but to see the Spirit come out with such a good work rate, such intensity, they really maintained their momentum very, very well. They showed almost no signs of fatigue in this game this afternoon. No, it's easy to psych yourself up to play against Chicago. You're fighting the atmosphere, you're fighting a good coach, and you're fighting a very solid team. I think Pittsburgh knows what they have to do. It's a big game for them, but the work rate that you're mentioning was outstanding. It never stopped from start to finish. Topolsky's done a great job against Karl Heinz Granitza. The work rate of Hagen, Child, the Polish line, they've been very durable. I think the way John Kowalski goes to his bench in the second half may have a lot to do with the way this game goes, and Pittsburgh must finish. Well, the Pittsburgh Spirit got on the boards. They had the initial lead thanks to a goal by Dave Hagen, and then Mike Lashev came back to tie it before the first quarter ended. Then in the second quarter, it was Ian Sibbies who got the goal, put the Pittsburgh Spirit on top. Spirit have been able to kill off a couple of penalties, and they are in a power play situation right now. We'll have the power play when we come back with the third quarter. So maybe if you're looking for an edge, right now I think it has to go to Pittsburgh. They have come in here into this building, and they have played well. They've got to be pretty pleased going into their dressing room. John Kowalski doesn't want to change too much for the second half, but again, if any of the players look tired, if they feel tired, he can go with McKenzie, and he can also go with Kevin Marr in that kind of a situation. So right now, Pittsburgh looks good. And one of the reasons is the way I think John Kowalski has worked his team in this half of play. We've seen the spirit penalty killers. They've done a good job, and now John Kowalski, in a pre-recorded feature, is going to show you what spirit penalty killing is all about. So we have four players, one, two, three, and four players, and he's our fifth player, our goalkeeper. He's inside the penalty box, penalty area, right over here. The other team has the ball. So let's say this player has the ball. Our player usually is Kevin Ma or David Hogan, will face the ball, and he's gonna try to put pressure on the ball, so the ball will go to the outside, and the uh, ball is very difficult to go across the field over here, so he will go a little bit on an angle over here, and now they have to play the ball to the corner, perhaps to this player over here. So let's say if the ball is changing hands over here, this player usually is Erhard Kapp, sometimes is George Tiger, he will move in, okay, and John O'Hara or Bobby Bosmeyer over here, at this stage, will just move in, 
all depends where this player is. And this player from the opposite side will move back over here, picking up this player who is moving into the far post. Say the ball is moved over all the way. Okay, now Erhard Cap over here moves over. This player probably will move over to help out on a ball over here or somewhere over here. That's the responsibility of John O'Hara. And this player now is helping. And this player is shifting over here to prevent this pass, diagonal pass, to this player. So these two players are very important. This player must stop this pass over here, any true passes over here, and this player must help out Erhard Kapp, which usually is Kevin, this pass right over here. And so the only other option the other team has is play the ball backwards over here to this player, to the point player. And then Kevin moves in again, and then these players reposition themselves Okay, protecting again the, this direct pass to the far post. Kevin uh, Amar, uh, when we observe him, we know he has a very long reach with his legs and he covers the distance over here very well. So therefore, this player always just about has to pass the ball, and Kevin will not get beat one-on-one. -on -one. Same goes for Erhard Cab over here. He doesn't get beat one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, John O'Hara is a very good reader of the game. He knows how to intercept passes much better than anybody else. The other player is Bobby Vosmeyer, so that's why they play over here. Okay, and David McKenzie, a drafted defender. Again, he's not afraid to block shots. Same with Erhard Cab. They will throw the body right in front of the ball. Many times they will hit, uh, get hit with the ball, but they won't let the ball go uh, on a goal. A uh, very important uh, part in this whole thing is a goalkeeper as well, because when the ball is going to, the, to this side over here and this player has the ball, the goalkeeper has to go to the near post. And if the ball is changed over to here, goalkeeper will move over. When the ball is changed over here, goalkeeper is shifting over. Most likely there will be no shots on the outside. If there will be shots, they should be, be, uh, they should be black, or they should be black, or it should be very easy for the goalkeeper to catch the ball, except when the, the other team hits the corners. Sounds like there's a bear in the beer. What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Where's he going? He's going to get that beer from that bear. It's not just a bear. That's a grizzly. Yeah, but that's not just a beer. That's fire brewed strohs. I thought we had three cases. Well, <laughs> had to make a deal. Strohs and Strohlite fire brewed for smoother taste. Do you know me? It's frightening how many novels of suspense I've written. But still, when I'm not recognized, it just kills me. So instead of saying I wrote Carrie, I carry the American Express card. Without it, isn't life a little scary? To apply for the card, look for an application and take one. The American Express card. Don't be home without it. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. I'm John Paul Della Camera. The Pittsburgh Spirit doing well here at halftime. They are leading by the score of 2-1 to one over the Chicago Sting. And one of the reasons for that is that Pittsburgh has marked one of the game's great players, Karl Heinz Granitza, out of the game. For a closer look at Karl Heinz Granitza, we now go downstairs to John Sanders. Thank you very much, John Paul. We do indeed have a very special guest at the halftime of this afternoon's game between the Chicago Sting and the Pittsburgh Spirit. One of the true stars of the MISL, Carl Heinz Granitza, who's also the captain of the Chicago Sting, joins us. For one thing, Carl Heinz, I want to let you know right away that even though you're ahead of us in the standings and, and the teams that came back this year have created some problems in terms of uh, winning games, we're delighted that Chicago, the other NASL teams have come back this year. How do you feel about uh, coming back into the MISL? You missed last year. You were in the league the year before that. I like the organization Missal as a uh, league, and I think it's a pretty exciting league. And uh, first of all, I like to uh, give compliments back to Pittsburgh. I think that's really an excellent organization, and I, I like to see Pittsburgh in the playoff round. They play a fantastic soccer, and they're a little bit fortunate in the moment, uh, they're not in the moment in the playoff spot. But I still believe they're coming in the playoff spot, and we are very, very delighted 
to be with our NSL teams in the middle, and we play really exciting games against Pittsburgh. Well, of course, playing here this afternoon and in Pittsburgh tomorrow afternoon, you may have a lot more to do with those playoffs than you think. Also, congratulations to you personally. You're having an outstanding season. What's been the key for you? The key is, first of all, uh, a nice, easy family life. I got a beautiful family with three beautiful children children my wife takes care of the house and I think we're speaking uh, at, how, uh, at home not so many uh, about soccer and I think this is very very helpful and uh, and the main concern is that we have really an excellent organization with Lee Stern as owner and uh, my personal friend and coach Willie Roy and Willie Roy is a pusher he's a, he's a bad reader sometimes in halftime when we're leading back and he's a winning coach and I like to win and I think that's one of the keys uh, family life Lee Stern coaching and uh, of course my wonderful teammates now the playoffs coming up you've already touched on it Pittsburgh would love just to get there you're going to be in the playoffs and that looks to me like the playoffs is really going to be something this year to find out who, who makes it to the championship game that's absolutely right everybody expecting uh, uh, this year maybe San Diego or Baltimore the really really strong teams but you know the playoff round is a totally different story maybe Pittsburgh uh, Pirates uh, Pittsburgh uh, Spirit got an excellent chance and win the whole thing and you cannot say right now somebody's out I mean they got a, everybody Everybody got a great chance. We like to hold, of course, a second place, and we like to beat at least today Pittsburgh. And I think we're working on this very, very hard. Uh, congratulations to Carl Heinz Granitza. Thank you for being with us. Continued success to you and the Chicago Sting, and we'll see you tomorrow in Pittsburgh, okay? It's very nice. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Carl Heinz Granitza, our special guest at halftime here in Chicago Stadium. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. When you see a supermarket with double coupons, do you wonder how they pay for them? Well, they don't. You do. Manufacturers only pay the coupons face value. You pay the rest in the form of higher food prices. A giant eagle doesn't offer double coupons because with absolute minimum prices, they can't. Of course, they still honor manufacturers' coupons. The manufacturer pays for that, not you. The new giant eagle. They'll change your mind about how you should shop for food. For everyone, there's someone who is right for you. At Matchmaker International, we know you're today's active, intelligent, single adult. At Matchmaker International, we know your frustrations of trying to meet through chance encounters. And we know your satisfaction when we bring the right people together. In Pittsburgh, call 279-5500 or check the phone book for the office nearest you. We're Matchmaker International and... We know you. Welcome back. We're here at halftime at Chicago Stadium. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Spirit lead it two to one. And for the kids that are watching this afternoon, if you're 14 years of age or younger, Burger King would like you to be the honorary ball boy or girl for a Spirit home game. Just tell us why you'd like to be that person in 25 words or less. And if you're selected, you get tickets to a Spirit home game, a Burger King t-shirt, an autographed ball, and your picture taken on the field with your favorite Spirit player. Please be sure to include your name, address, your phone number, and age on your entry. And send those entries to Burger King Spirit ball boy or girl Civic Arena, Gate 7, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15219. Now, tomorrow afternoon, when the Spirit return home, I'd like to remind everyone that it's going to be Mug Day as the Spirit again meet the Chicago Sting. The first 7,500 fans in attendance will receive a colorful plastic St. Patrick's Day drinking mug. Kickoff time, 2 p.m. Tickets available at all choice seat locations. Penguins are leading in Pittsburgh over the New York Rangers. Four to nothing here. It's Pittsburgh to Chicago 1. We'll be back with a look at the highlights in just a moment. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Cannonsburg has changed a lot since Terry Varekas grew up here, and Terry's helped change it. As manager of the local Mellon Bank, he made a loan to Quasitronics Company to build their new plant. They've doubled their payroll and started training local workers in electronics assembly. This area means a lot to me, and it needs new business to grow. So when someone brings me an idea that will help create jobs, it's more than just business to me. Talk to your Mellon Banker, a neighbor you can count on. Burger King breaks it to McDonald's. Gently. We're so sorry, we're so sorry. McDonald's, McDonald's. We're sandwich pizza stuffing, out of egg McMuffin. Two, two, one, two, two, one. In a nationwide test, our flaky crust sandwich with golden eggs and melted cheese, sausage, bacon, or ham, beat the stuffing out of egg McMuffin for best taste. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? 
fresh squeezed. Did it this morning. And then I even made my famous spaghetti. I don't have to do these things, but I do. Even with laundry. I don't have to use biz bleach, but spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> Just half a cup of biz with detergent, and I know it's going to come out. Biz is the only major brand that makes me feel I'm doing all I can. And to me, that's what making a home is about. <laughs> Give it all you can with this bleach. Struggling artist group emergency liquidation sale for one day only. Save up to 50%. Huge sofa style original oil paintings from $19. Smaller paintings from $3. Thousands of beautiful original oil paintings by professional artists. Absolutely no painting over $39. Struggling artist quality at rock bottom struggling artist prices. Struggling artist group art sale this Sunday only. Pittsburgh Marriott Green Tree, Holiday House Monroeville, and the Holiday Inn Sewickley, noon to 5 p.m. Absolutely nothing over $39. Welcome back. We're already underway with the third quarter of play. The Spirit are anxious to get started because they've got a power play for another minute and 17 seconds. But right now, Chicago has the ball trying to break down from behind. Leverich is able to tackle the ball away from Magali. But now it's Glenn with a drive to the left side. And remember, it's the Spirit on the power play for another minute and three seconds. The penalty went to Mike Lashev right at the end of the second quarter. Two to one, the Spirit leading. Hagen takes it in. Spirit now will try to set it up. Terlecki with Leverich on his left. This is Mark. Driving a box and a score. Immediately by Paul Child, the Spirit lead it three to one. They came out in a hurry in the power play. Child from Mark Leverich. And that's a big score for Paul Child. Let's watch it again. Stan Terlecki with it. Leverich sees what he has. He plays it right through the box. Child far post. Right spot for him. And he makes it look easy to give Pittsburgh a three to one lead. We didn't have time to show you the highlights from the last half, but we've got plenty of time to show you this one once more. Terlecki to Leverich, who could shoot it, but he blasted right through to Child at the far post. He was unmarked, and there's a look at Paul Child, who sat out the other night and obviously was not very pleased about it. He came out flying this afternoon. Goal number 23 for Child, Paul Child. Goal number three for the Spirit. They lead it 3-1. to one. Mark Leverich gets the assist. That's his... who's now out of the penalty box that goes out of play and the Pittsburgh Spirit will have a kick in on the far side 1340 to play third quarter Gordon Smith will set it up against Mike Lashev Hagen is on right now for the Spirit along with Earhart Cap, Liberich and Child a give and go between Modlik and Smith Lashev is well downfield trying to slow down the Pittsburgh offense now Child heads it right at midfield. Hagen will take over for Smith. Lashev marks him. Move it ahead to Child. Here's Hagen. Three to one. The Spirit leading by two. Hagen, who has a goal this afternoon, looks for Child. Child off the boards. Nobody there for the rebound. He comes back to the red line. Cap heads it across to Smith. 13 minutes to play in the third quarter. Mark Liberich, who got an assist on the last goal, Child's power play goal. Earhart Cap looking for Hagen. Now gets it back. Cap in the corner, uses the boards, looking for Child. Finaguero is there to pick it off. Back comes Chicago. Lashev running with Parkinson. This is Parkinson with the ball. Following is Marrera. Lashev now. Cap will mark him. Lashev still controls. Finally tackled away right in the box area and cleared downfield. About all the Spirit could do there, Lashev had the pressure on. It's another good play this afternoon by Gordon Smith. Pressure one on one. If he doesn't block it, Chicago did have another man open in the box on the other side. Walking it up is Symington. Mark Symington goes on the far side to Rudy Glenn. Carl Heinz Granitza, whom you heard at halftime, is back on. Being marked by Topolsky. Topolsky headed it away. Now Kapka looking for Terlecki. On the far side, it'll be picked up by Symington. Now Glenn controls for Chicago. 
to Granitza right at the red line. Carl Hines Granitza. To Glenn. With a drive, and right there is Moblik. Granitza was on the doorstep, but it was a fairly easy save for Peter Moblik. 11.25 left. We're in the third quarter. Spirit by two. It's three to one. John O'Hara comes on. Takes over the ball. On with Adam Topolsky. And whenever you see Carl Heinz Granitza on the field, you're probably going to see Adam Topolsky. Moblik goes to Topolsky. Adam doesn't really have to worry about scoring goals. He has another job this afternoon. If he stops Carl Heinz Granitza, he will have done more than his job. Carl Heinz still can play poorly or not do anything for 59 minutes, and in that final minute, he can kill you. So uh, your job is never over until that final horn or whistle sounds. They called that on Stan Terlecki for holding. First foul of this, the third quarter. Marrera takes over. Working back there with Symington. Symington now on the near side. Across the red line looking for Granitza. Drop it in the corner to Roberts right in front. A deflection just missed by Carl Heinz Granitza. Looked like a pinball machine that time and almost bounced back in the goal. Here comes Marrera with a drive knocked down in front by Topolsky. Sibbies looks for Terlecki. Marrera intercepts for Chicago. Looking for Carl Heinz Granitza. He has it to Symington. Marrera. Turning, there is Granitza to score. He got a beautiful pass from Neil Roberts, and it's 3-2. The Sting have scored. It is 3-2 Pittsburgh. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. If you've got money to burn, go ahead. Don't buy your health and beauty aids at Thrift Drug. Our Treasury brand products would save you too much money. All 800 of them save you up to 50% over the national brands you get elsewhere. And if you're not satisfied with any Treasury brand product, we just give you your money back. Then you'd have even more money to burn. Top quality Treasury brand only at Thrift Drug. For the rest of us who don't have money to burn, John Paul Della Camera called it. He said he can look like he's not doing anything at all. Then all of a sudden, the ball comes in front. Roberts, there's at this the point. feed from Roberts. I, I don't know if he can see him at that point or just feel him <laughs> or hear him or what, because it, I didn't even see Granitza breaking in behind the defense. But Roberts, it looked like he played it there purposely. So my guess is that he knew he was there one way or the other. That did not look like luck. It looked like uh, just a well designed play. It comes four minutes and five seconds after the Spirit had scored the power play goal to make a three to one lead, and it now is three to two. 57 goals for Carl Heinz Granitza as he gets Chicago right back in it. Parkinson now, it's knocked down at the red line. Hitting the deck against Victor Moreland. Is Mark Liverich. Mark was almost his teammate because Chicago wanted him, and Pittsburgh was able to uh, get Mark's name on a contract. And thus, Mark is here instead of in Chicago. Andrew Parkinson ended up here, as did Dan Canner, both former teammates of Mark's. Here's where Pittsburgh must be careful, John. They've got to settle it down a little bit. They don't want to start running and getting caught in counterattacks with Chicago because you don't want to see momentum shift. Whenever Pittsburgh is lost in this building when they've had the lead, they've had that momentum shift, especially in the last game when they led 2 nothing at halftime. And then Chicago scored six times in the second half to win that game 6-3. to 13-9 was the score in the first meeting. That's the most goals ever given up by a Pittsburgh Spirit team. That game was in Pittsburgh. That was a wild, wild night. Liberich trying to get it back from Hagen. Can't get there. Child now. The pass does not get to him. Parkinson starts back with Moreland. Now they move it down the right side to Spalding. Moreland, the header misses. And it's cleared out by Paul Child. Chicago Sting now starting to put on some pressure. This is Dan Cantor. Goes to Magali. Drive off the glass to the left. Hagen drops it to midfield. Earhart Tapp trying to take over for Pittsburgh and does. Long lead ball for Liverich. He won't get there. Back it comes to the red line. And the Chicago Sting will try to settle it down with 8.42 to play third quarter. It's 3-2. to two. The Pittsburgh Spirits still leading. And now the fans here in the Chicago Stadium. Capacity 16,666. Starting to get into it a little bit right in front. Knocked back. Still loose. Nice back heel. Give and go. Drive misses high. 
And the ball is headed away by Cap. Good opportunity for Parkinson there. The foul goes against Chicago, and the Pittsburgh Spirit will put it in play. Dan Cantor did the same thing about a minute ago, right over the back of a Spirit player, and they didn't call that. I think that's what gets the crowd going, because it was the exact same play, Glenn going over the back that time of Paul Child. Pittsburgh's got to settle things down, though. Chicago came back too strong there and almost ended up with another scoring opportunity. Pittsburgh up by one, three, two. Marrera gets it to the goalkeeper. Negrero rolls it ahead now to Symington. Symington looking for Granitza. Granitza marked by Topolsky. There's the clearing pass. All the way down to the far corner looking for Terlecki. Taken away from him, but there's Sibby's almost got a foot on it. Negrero runs it out of there to Glenn. Long lead ball in the far corner to Roberts. Roberts will settle. Terlecki intercepts. Dan Terlecki to Topolsky. Adam being chased from behind by Roberts. Looks for Z. Kapka on a run now. Going for Terlecki in the corner. Stand there. Here's a drive by Kapka right in front for Civis. Terlecki trying to follow. Roberts pushes him. Stan Terlecki with 7-17 left in the third quarter. The Spirit 3. Chicago 2. Granitza takes it away from Terlecki. But it's a one-on-three for Carl Hines. Now Roberts comes to help. Here's Carl Hines, Granita with a drive and a score. We're tied at three. Granita will get it on his opposite side. Simonton is running that way. You don't see him there, but a well-placed shot there, Simonton. He was wide open on the other side, and I think everyone thought the ball would have gone there. Roberts to Granita, same combination that Cooks before. He's tightly marked. But the ball gets through. Stan Terlecki and Peter Mavlik exchanged some uh, discrepancies with one another when it was over. I think Stan felt Peter should have had it, and Peter said, hey, you lost the ball, or something similar to that, because the ball was lost in the middle of the field in the one-on-one -on -one when Granitza took the ball away. That's where the play started. So Granitza gets another one. That's 58. It comes just three minutes and nine seconds after the same combination. Carl Hines, Granitza. And Neil Roberts teamed up, so they do it twice in a row, and we start over. We're 3-3 with 7.05 left in the third quarter. Pittsburgh still playing the kind of game that they can play to get a win here, but they've got to finish. Shot by Hagen, saved by, by Naguero. Ball up on the boards. Now dropped down by Liveridge. Loose in the corner. Cap can't control. Now he does. Moves it in front, but it's picked off there by Magali. Magali marked by Hagen. All the way to the red line on a run. He'll go to the corner. Drive it in front. Settled there by Smith nicely. Good long lead pass now to Paul Child. A little too far. And out of the nets to make the play is Negrero. Right at midfield. Hagen battles Magali. Chicago controlling. With it is Cantor. Now to Magali. Intercepted there by Smith. Smith has played well for Pittsburgh this afternoon. 3-3. Three, three. Brand new soccer game. Magali going in the center of the field to Cantor. Cantor with a shot deflected by Hagen. Magali gets it back to him. Or rather, Moreland gets it back to him. And now, now to take over is Parkinson. Parkinson turning. Still turning. Almost intercepted. That one will go up and out of play with 5.53 left. We're tied at three. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. You know, at Midas, we've installed over 48 million mufflers, more than any other muffler chain. In fact, compare us to any of them, and you know what you'll find? We've had more repeat customers than they've had customers. We've done more foreign cars than they've done cars. And with our Midas guarantee, we've installed more free mufflers than they've sold. When it comes to experience, no one can touch Midas. Just a We're tied at three here in Chicago Stadium. Still 5.53 left third quarter. John Kowalski has gone to his bench. Franz Sock, Charlie Green on along with Stan Chalecki. It's important for Stan to have a good shift here. He's going to lose the ball the way he plays at times in a game and cost you goals, but he's going to get a lot more than he gives up. So Stan knows what he did. He's just going to make the recovery and get Pittsburgh right back in. Charlie Green on the far side near midfield to Adam Topolsky. Marked by Rudy Glenn. Taken away. Chicago controls. That's Marrero. Terlecki battles him. And John O'Hara takes over at the Pittsburgh red line. 5.30 left in the third quarter. 
We're tied at three. Terlecki battles, comes up with the ball. Tackled away from him by Symington. Now Stan to Sock. Sock looking for Terlecki. Missed the pass. Symington controls to Roberts. A couple of real good shifts by Neil Roberts. Assisting on the last two Carl Heinz Granitza goals that tied the game. Glenn on the far side to Carl Heinz Granitza. Turning, chipping, intercepted by Green. Green is bumped, and Glenn will control for Chicago. Back it comes to Granitza. Deflected up and out of play. It's 3-3. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Burger King does it again. Perhaps you think we're reminding you that the Whopper beat the Big Mac, right? Really, now, would Burger King do that? Sure we would! But this time, it's breakfast. Because our croissant sandwich just beat the stuffing out of Egg McMuffin two to one for best taste. Our flaky croissant filled with golden eggs, melted cheese, and sausage, bacon, or ham. First the Whopper, now the croissant sandwich. Well, win a few, win a few. Aren't you hungry for Burger King? 3-3 is the score. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium on this Saturday afternoon. Another reminder, we'll go right back to NCAA basketball action following this soccer game. And it is 3-3. Same two teams in Pittsburgh tomorrow. Granitza drive. Moblick makes the save and gets it back. Coming in to stand on the doorstep was Neil Roberts. Roberts has shown a good work rate also in this game. Franz Sock intercepted. Picked off by Symington. They go to Marrera. And now Roberts on the far side across the red line using the boards. Topolsky knocks it down, but Granitz is there. Now Glenn against Green in the corner. Rudy turns and will bring it in. Nobody on him right now. Looking for Granitz, but Topolsky takes it away. Topolsky to Tsak. Franz Tsak looking for Green across the red line. Green can't get there in time. Chicago's Roberts controls, brings it back to Naguera. Right at midfield is Dan Cantor. Four minutes remaining. Play on, they say. Magali with it. Now out in front is Spalding. His drive is defected by Green. He'll make a run with Stan Terlecki. Terlecki takes it down the left side. A drive by Stan looking for Green. And a great save made by Naguero. He fell on the ball to keep Charlie Green away. 3.40 left, 3-3. Three, three. We're in the third quarter. O'Hara is held from behind. That call goes against Pat Magali. Crowd is booing it, but that's a great call. It was an obvious call as well. Pittsburgh still uh, tied with Chicago at three. Sock on the right side can't settle as he took the pass from Topolsky, being marked by Spalding. In the bottom right, you can see the save as they run down the replay. There's another one headed into the air by Child and punched out of there nicely by the goalkeeper, Naguero. Naguero has been tested here in the latter stages from the five minute mark in by the Pittsburgh Spirit. Early part of the period, Spirit on the power play, got the goal to make it 3-1. to one. Then Chicago turned it around through the middle part of the period, got a pair of goals from Carl Hines, Granitza to tie the game at three, and now the Pittsburgh Spirit seeming to find a second win starting to come on a little bit. And they need to finish, as we mentioned before. There's one of the reasons why Chicago uh, was so strong early in the season, Pato Marhanek, but he's only played in 11 games. What a great individual player. They expect him back in a few weeks' time. And the other player they're missing is Jerry Gray, who, like Granitza, had nine points in the first two games against Pittsburgh, and is headed right back out of play by Dan Cantor. So again, Pittsburgh will have it in the corner. Earhart cap. Gino DiPolito puts it down for him. 3-3 is the score, 314 to play in the third quarter. Leverage a drive and a kick save this time made by Naguero. You see what kind of a dimension, though, Liverage adds to the team. A quick, hard, left-footed shot. They're going to call, call it on a corner kick because of where it was deflected out of play. But Liverage's shot was right on. It forces the goalkeeper to make a great save, and here Pittsburgh gets a corner kick. Earhart cap. Right in front, looking for Child. It was punched away by the goalkeeper. But now Pittsburgh re retains control as Hagen will drop it all the way back to Peter Moblick. Coming down is Knight to try to mark Moblick. Smith looking for Child. Intercepted by Spalding. And the call goes against Paul Child. I think he got that for reputation more than anything else. I think you're right. On the right side now, settling his canter. Moreland. 
picked off by Liverich and banged high in the air off the foot of Hayden Knight. Now Earhart cap as Knight will come up and try to mark him to Liverich. Good move by Mark to try to get free at midfield. He's held. Well, that foul goes on Chicago. Team fouls now four on the sting, two on the spirit, 233 remaining in the third quarter. Shots on goal coming into this period. Spirit 11, Chicago 9. I would think that by now, uh, possibly Chicago might be ahead in shots on goal. We'll get the official totals for you at the end of the period. Hayden Knight has Parkinson with him, and he's tackled by Earhart Cap. Cap coming out to make the play at the red line. Chicago, once again, right in front of the box area. Child will try to move it out of there. Leverage. Long lead ball into the corner. Hagen could not quite get there. Mark Leverage can do so many things with the ball. That looked like nothing, and it almost worked into something for the Pittsburgh Spirit that had Naguera completely handcuffed. Roberts picks it up. Hard shot and a rebound is up and over the glass out of play with 1.51 left in the third quarter. We will get Carl Heinz Granitza back on for Chicago. Keep your eye on him. Rudy Glenn returning along with Derek Spaulding. Spirit making changes as well. Terlecki will come back along with Franz Sock and Charlie Green. I think John Kowalski likes the potential. Franz Sock is not hitting Stan Terlecki the way Stan would like him to, but the potential is there. There's some speed on that line. There's some good ball handling on the part of Terlecki, and Sock has that capability as well to do the job. There's one other thing that we're seeing Chicago do a little differently, and that's in players. Franz Matthew has not been out in the field, I would say, at all of this quarter and from the last quarter. He had a groin injury coming into the game, played well in the first quarter against Terlecki. He may, and I'm guessing that he did, re-injure himself, especially if we don't see him come back. Roberts intercepts for Chicago. Granitza has it. Back to Roberts as they work together so well. Sock takes over for Pittsburgh. Charlie Green will head it down. Back it comes to John O'Hara. The defensemen on this line are O'Hara and Topolsky. Adam out there to mark Carl Heinz Granitza. Sock now. Right at midfield. Winning the ball is Spalding. Granitza back to Spalding. Terlecki back for defense. Symington in the corner. Granitza looks to Symington. Battling Topolsky. It's loose in front. Symington with a chance. A shot knocked down by Moblik. Cleared away by John O'Hara. I think that's Peter's best save. It came from point blank range. Chicago almost getting too many men out in the field right in front of their bench. Marrara takes over. To Carl Heinz, Granitza gets a return pass. Off the boards in front is knocked away again by Johnny O'Hara. Terlecki drops it for Topolsky. Sock will take over. Brand Sock looking for Stan Terlecki right at midfield. Now O'Hara to Topolsky. Carl Heinz, Granitza comes back. Terlecki. Gets away on the far side from Marrera. Now Stan moves it across. Terlecki stops it. Looking for Charlie Green, who's in the box. Terlecki, a good dribble, a good move. Stan takes it in. Now loses control. Comes to Charlie Green with a chance. Finally picked off by Symington. Now there's a drive by Topolsky, and it was almost deflected in by Roberts. That's it. An outstanding third period. We're tied at three. More coming up from Chicago Stadium. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Can you believe it, JT, with an $18 million contract? Sure is a long way from the playground. Think he still drinks strolls? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. JT, Mr. Yeah. Richard. Timothy. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Oh. This is all right. Glad he didn't forget his friends. Oh, it's Strolls. Where is the Strolls? Out by the pool. The, the pool? pool? Strolls and Strollites. Now that's a cooler. <laughs> Fire brewed for smoother taste. Do you know me? I beat him in the movie Chariot Safar. You didn't beat me. Well, I beat the chap who played you. Mind you, I couldn't beat your gold medals in the 20 and 24 Olympics. <laughs> Hey, what happened to the check? The American Express card. That's what happened to it. You're still pretty fast, aren't you? <laughs> to apply for the card, look for an application and take one. The American Express card. I know. Don't leave home without it. The unsold airplane seat. Until now, nobody flew in it. The unsold cruise cabin. Until now, nobody sailed in it. 
But now, with this card as a member of DTI, you can buy unsold travel space and save up to 60% off the regular price. If you can travel on six weeks notice or less, you should call now for free information about this unusual travel club. While everyone else is paying full fare rates for exciting trips to all parts of the world, DTI members pay only a fraction of the regular rate for the same trip and the same guaranteed reservations. You are invited to join the club, so call now for free information about DTI, where the world is on sale every day of the year. Here's the number. For free information in the mail about DTI membership, call 800-742-2500. The call is free, 800-742-2500. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. Let's go back and take a look at some of the action. That goal came in 41 seconds. Now watch the turning effort. Roberts with a feed there to Carl Heinz Granitza. That made it 3-2. to two. The first goal was by Paul Child. It was a power play goal. Got a great pass from Mark Liverich. And then here is the goal that tied it. It'll kick loose in front. Again, it's Roberts feeding Carl Heinz Granitza. Now watch Roberts here. Go to Granitza, and instead of passing, he shoots this time, and he just picks the corner to make it 3-3. Another look. That's where he took the ball away from Stan Trelecki. Watch how tough he is played, though, once he gets here. He'll draw a crowd. That's Roberts. Back for Carl Heinz. There's John O'Hara. Look at the other players. All fairly close to Granitza, but the traffic doesn't bother him at all. Just a great shot. Shots on goal in that quarter. Six for Pittsburgh. They now have 17. Five for Chicago. 14 total in the game, 17-14. The spirit of outs shot Chicago so far. But as we go to the fourth quarter of play, we're dead even at three. So, John Paul, you take over as we go with 15 minutes left. It's going to be all out here. What about the goal getters? We need a couple more. The goal getter has made a good choice. Matt McCullough has picked Stan Trelecki. Now we'll see what happens. $400 worth of groceries from the new Giant Eagle if Stan Trelecki scores a goal. Next goal is going to be a big one. Momentum-wise, if Pittsburgh gets it, they can slow down the momentum of Chicago. If the Sting get it, it will be their third straight. Chicago with the ball. Jose Morera in the attack zone. A shot is blocked by Earhart Cap. All the way back to the Sting, Moreland. Hey, another player that I like today who I think is really starting to settle into his role is Mark Liverich. He seems much more comfortable. He's running the field much better than he was earlier. He's getting used to the players as we have a foul down there. Mark hasn't really had a chance to practice with the team, John. His last shove is down. The reason being that as soon as Mark came here, Pittsburgh was off to the West Coast for their six games in nine days. So it's uh, learned by doing, basically, instead of having a chance to practice as much as he would like to with his new teammates. And that's team foul number one. They could be important. We're getting a penalty situation on either side. Magali with a shot off the boards, and Moblick is there. He'll throw it long right wing for Leverich. Mark will get up to it, but he's run down by Morera. Morera is a newcomer to Chicago, and he's played pretty well. Uh, he comes from Uruguay, I believe, and uh, Jose is only 26 years old, getting a chance to come over and help out Chicago. A lot of teams making a lot of late-season roster changes. Of course, a lot of that keyed by the demise of the Chicago, of the New York Cosmos, rather. Portland up for Lasha. Chicago was benefited by the Cosmos' demise from that respect. Child will intercept for Gordon Smith. Up the boards near side for Liverich. Back for Dave Hagen. See how smoothly he moved it out of traffic and out of the crowd. Kept the ball moving. Chow wanted Liverich. Communications gap there. Liverich wants off. On the right side, Lashev. Broken Good. up by Erhard Cap. Nice move by Cap. Lashev wanted a call, but actually he just won the ball from him. You know, if Pittsburgh plays this well, they deserve to win it. And that's the thing that they're going for now is the ball is played back to where he can't use his hands there. In games like this this year that they've played well, they have not managed to come away with a result that it's cost them dearly. But they're playing well enough to win against a great team. Watch Rudy's out for this guy. Rudy Glenn, Gordon Smith marking him. Glenn, very popular player here in Chicago. He's big, too. He's got good size. Knocked out to Spalding. Right in front, Moblick save another one. Gordon Smith must win the ball, and he does. Spalding heading it for Roberts, who was wide open on that play before, but they didn't get the ball. Now Spalding off the boards. Rudy Glenn tees it up. Save off the left leg of Peter Moblick. Still tied at three. Roberts shot in traffic. This is being held, and he took a dive. If they ever called a penalty shot on that one, I think John Kowalski and the players would have come right over the boards. Long ball off the boards. is shooting it wide. Hagen will get to it. Kowalski did a great job on Granitza. He did not foul him. Carl Hines took the dive. That and should be a call. 
on who? <laughs> Going to be on Rudy Glenn, I would think. I mentioned Rudy Glenn's size. He's 6'2", 185. A lot of action there. Hagen working hard just to clear the ball to midfield. Yeah, I didn't see it. There it is. Yeah, that's obvious on uh, Glenn as opposed to Hagen. I hadn't seen it when it was done the first time. The other night when we were in Los Angeles, John, somebody held up a sign. It was well done. It was professionally done. It's an MISL diving competition, <laughs> and they held it up any time they thought somebody dove. You've got some good actors in this league, and the great players, it seems like Granitza, take that dive, and, and they get the call. But I'll tell you what. Uh, you ask these players why they do it sometimes, and they'll tell you why. They are brutalized so much during a game that that kind of settles down the other team sometimes. So for Carl Hines, if you have that respect for him and you know that if you get that contact with him in the box, he may go down and he'll draw the foul. He's going to win his share of them too. But he'll also lose some like right there when it was very obvious. John O'Hara will put it in play now to Topolsky. These same two teams back in Pittsburgh tomorrow. And that's tough to do to play yeah. somebody back to back games. Long ball the other way. Naguera's way out. I thought too far out. But Glenn will help him out. Now it's lost by Simonton over the glass. Out of play. It's tied at three. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Something big is going on at the Big's house. How's those big baked potatoes, Brother Big? Here you go, Sissy Big. How about a big piece of bread, Little Big? You got it, Uncle Big. Pass that big bottle of Diet Coke. I love a big glass. Me too. Me, Me too. too. Your Coca-Cola bottler brings you the new big three-liter bottle. A big way to satisfy. Bet you save big money on that big bottle. Big money. The new big three-liter bottle. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. I'm John Paul Della Camera with John Sanders. It's a 3-3 tie. Pittsburgh and Chicago, 12-13 to go in the fourth quarter. Smith off the boards for Terlecki, who's held by Victor Moreland. No call. Naguera rolls it now on the right side to Dan Cantor. Upfield, this is Andrew Parkinson to Jose Morera. Victor Moreland up the boards. Cap marking his man, Magali. Magali doing a nice job, but he passes behind Morera. Pittsburgh defending a Chicago team that was too anxious that time to attack and as a result that ball went between a couple of players and wide. Morera up the field. That's a foul. And they're going to call that one on Chicago which surprises me. Well I'll tell you what. I think they were both trying to get in position and they felt that Parkinson was using his hands to hold Gordon Smith off. I'm just surprised that they called it that way. Sibby's with it. That probably is what happened. For Terlucky, back to goal. Stan rolls it for Earhart Cap. Sends it back into the box. Nobody over at the far post. Earhart did not get a good foot on it no, that it was time. A harmless ball. The cap is shot. Great save, Naguera. Z put it right there. Naguera just gives it away on his distribution kick. And we've seen Naguera do that a couple of times. Make a save, immediately get up, and himself run the ball out. That's fine as long as you control the ball. Kapka up for Sibbies. Over to Terlecki. He's going to be free. A slow ball to him, and it's shot wide. Stan didn't have enough on that pass to make it count. Remember the last game in here three years ago when Pittsburgh was able to beat Chicago. Naguera was coming out a lot, and on that last goal, he made a mistake. He came out too far, and if Pittsburgh can take advantage of that fact when he comes out, they might be able to get one behind him. Child, Hagen, and Sibbies have the goals. Lashev and Karl Heinz Granitza. During the scoring, Granitza with two. Look at this ball back for Spalling, but the shot is blocked and out of play off a of deflection of Earhart Cap. We go to a break, ten and a half to play, tied at three, and you're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Excitement. Pickway lets you do your own thing, exercising or relaxing or just kicking around with this spring spectacular sale of women's athletic fashions. Take your pick of these four styles. Only $9 a pair this week at Pickway Shoes. Fashion, selection, value. This is today's Pickway Shoes. There's a Pickway near you. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. I'm John Paul Della Camera along with John Sanders. Ten and a half to play and it's tied at three. It has been an outstanding afternoon of soccer and a highly competitive game. Good work rate for both teams and we'll see if they can do the same thing tomorrow when these same two clubs go back to Pittsburgh for a 205 kickoff. Spalding off the boards. Granitza couldn't get enough on it. Couldn't settle it down and now Spalding does but he cranks it upstairs. 
and that will give Pittsburgh a goal kick. With all of the skill that we see out on the field today, it reminds me of spirit soccer camps because the spirit players themselves are the guys that do the teaching. And if you'd like some information on sending your child to a Pittsburgh spirit soccer camp, on Monday you can get in touch with Denny Colmeyer, the spirit director of youth development, at 642-1815. Pittsburgh would like to put on a clinic if they can the rest of the afternoon and beat Chicago. It's tied at three as O'Hara brings it up. Johnny faking with Rudy Glenn on him. Off the boards for Child, who has one goal this afternoon. Child wanting to turn on Spalding. Spalding dumps him, no call. On the right for Neil Roberts, who has had a very busy afternoon. McKenzie on now for his first shift outside of killing a couple of penalties. Now, Dave has not played that much. Ball played up for Simonton from Granitza. Good ball on the left. Rudy Glenn off the boards. Nobody there at that side. And Leverich takes it out of danger for Child. Keep in mind, we'll be selecting our Stroh's offensive and defensive players of the game at the conclusion of this contest. And I don't think the issue has been decided yet. No. Not like the other night in St. Louis where we could have picked them long before the finish. Child from Malbuck. A 3-3 tie. Leverich breaks for goal. Long ball to him, but Naguera got there ahead of him. Magali chesting it down. But Topolsky is there on the intercept for Paul Child. Double teamed along the near boards, and that's a foul called on Chicago. Free kick coming up here for Pittsburgh. The tough part is that all of these games are so important that you can't look ahead to the next game. Pittsburgh wants to stay healthy for tomorrow against the same Sting team. And John Kowalski has a good, a good chance to look at his bench and bring in players, and he's doing that now with McKenzie. He's got to remember tomorrow as well, but this game is so important as they all are, with 10, counting this one left for Pittsburgh and Kansas City. An interception, Granitza. Right wing, Marrera. Open man in the box. Roberts will score. Roberts from Carl Heinz Granitza on the interception. And Neil Roberts continues to haunt the Pittsburgh spirit. 4-3 Chicago. Neil Roberts picks up his 18th. The steal had already been made. Granitza to Marrera. And it's a pretty simple matter at this point. Just really touched it home as all Roberts had to do because Peter Moblick had too much to carry. The interception, the steal had been made. O'Hara had tried to force the ball back to the other side. Granitza will clear it with his left foot to Marrera. Now watch Roberts. All he has to do is touch it, get it up in the air a little bit over Moblick, and that puts Chicago ahead. But there's still a lot of time remaining. Here's a look at Neil Roberts. The last time these two clubs played, he had a play as a defender, and he scored a couple of goals in that game to help defeat Pittsburgh 6-3. Pittsburgh needs to get one back. They trail now 4-3. They trailed for the first time this afternoon. Gordon Smith now with it. Neutral zone. Up the right side for Terlucky. Stan looking at double team. Smith has to come in and win it. Great job off the boards. But Cantor takes it. If Gordon Smith doesn't win that ball, it could be three on one the other way. Also keep in mind the child scored 41 seconds into the third quarter. Since then, it's been all Chicago. The Sting have scored three times to take the lead. Dan Cantor running it up. Off the boards, he wants Fernandez a shot. Right at Peter Malbuck on the short side. He'll throw it upfield for Trelucky. Long run by Sibbies, but the ball is deflected away into the corner. Naguera almost mishandled it with Sibbies right there. He may have heard him coming. Morera blocked by Terlucky. Now Sibbies tackles it on that far side. Chicago will get it. A collision. Are they going to call it two? Yes. Gino DiPolito will call a two-minute minor penalty there. On Earhart Camp, we go to a break and backs to the wall for the spirit. When we come back, shorthanded. It is Chicago 4, Pittsburgh 3, and you're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. Bye -bye. Jenny, don't wake the baby. Okay. Oh, come on, Jenny. Come on. This is it. My new room. Oh. A lot of kids like Jenny are getting the room they've always wanted. Because there's Melon. If you need a loan for an extra room or for anything else, talk to Melon. Melon Bank, a neighbor you can count on. As we come back, Chicago with the lead in the power play. Pittsburgh has held them off on two man advantage opportunities thus far. Granitza right side, Spalding off the glass and wide. Hagen banks it to the near side. He goes down, foul on Chicago. Foul number four on the stink. 
They call yeah. that obstruction, and you wonder why. It isn't always the man running over the other man. It can be obstruction, and that's what that call was. Also, you look back at the penalty, you say, boy, that's a costly penalty. It is in terms of the way the game situation is, but it was not uh, on Earhart Cap's part. It was more a penalty of effort than anything else. Working hard to get the ball. Looked like his knee was out on the replay just enough to make that call. Marr will break it up for Hagen. Hagen, Marr, O'Hara, and McKenzie. Long ball for Marr, but Naguera is there. Marr, the only player on Pittsburgh to score shorthanded over the last two years. He's got two this year, one last year. Spalding upfield, Manny Rojas. Broken up by Dave McKenzie. Mack towing it off the boards, and Marr will take it away. Pittsburgh down 4-3. Over the midfield line comes Kevin Moore running it to the boards. He and Granitza bang, and Aguero will get it with a minute three on the man advantage for the Sting. Carl Hines Granitza just used his body to run Kevin off the ball and take over. Here he comes. Granitza. Right side, last of right back score. Bang, bang it in. Chicago leads 5-3 on a power play goal by that man, Carl Heinz Granitza. Watch it again. He had taken the ball away from Marr. Goes to Lashev. Now watch, he keeps going. Hits it right back and just drives it past Moblik. Now it's a cool two-goal lead with 6.55 to play, and the Spirit are going to have to hurry. thing that works here, watch the one touch. Not here, but when Granitza gets within range, he lays it off and quickly, look at that, one touch right back. If Lashev holds onto the ball, it allows Pittsburgh a chance to defend against Granitza. When it's bang-bang like that, there's no way and you're at the mercy of the shooter if you're the goalkeeper, Peter Malbuck. And I hate to be at the mercy of Carl Heinz Granitza. That is his 59th goal of the year. And his third of the game. He has an assist to go with that, so he has a total of four points in the game. He has scored 13 points in less than three games against the Pittsburgh Spirit. Ninth hat trick this year for that man, Carl Heinz Granitza. And he leads the MISL in hat tricks. Jungle is the leading point getter, but Carl Heinz Granitza has four goals. Hagen. Now with an uphill battle for Pittsburgh. They're down by a couple. Davey cutting it to the right. Fakes. And it's cleared back the other way. Pittsburgh had control of this game for a while, but when you're within, uh, with a, within a goal of Chicago, maybe control is a bad word, but Pittsburgh was playing well. Well, it shades the last time we were in the building when Pittsburgh led 2-0 and then gave up six goals in the second half. Cap off the boards. And now it's going to be Hagen trailing. By a couple. Left side cap. Drills it. It's deflected, but right at Naguera, unfortunately, who holds on. Time remaining in the game is the factor now. 6-10 to go. Up the field, Parkinson. Right side to Moreland. Back to Moreira. On the left, Dan Cantor. In the corner, Magali. Turning around, shoots it. Stopped in the short side by Peter Moblick. If Pittsburgh can get the next goal, they're within one, and they're still very much alive. But right now, as you mentioned before, John, they got one in the third quarter, and Chicago has kept them away the rest of the way. Cap, long ball the other way. Magali heading it. We've got a whistle and a foul going against Chicago, and that's five. Smith up for Child, knocked off the boards for Leverage. Pittsburgh can draw one more foul on the stick. They'll get a power play. Leverage working hard. But Chicago has two players. They're off the boards. Took a crazy one. Who's that going on? It's on... Pittsburgh. Mark Leverage is upset. Had it gone the other way, that would have been the sixth foul. That is only two on Pittsburgh. 12,700 plus in Chicago. Big crowd for the Sting, who averaged better than 10 a game. They're number five in attendance in the MISL this year. The race for number one between Kansas City and St. Louis. Long ball up for Granitza. Topolsky on him. Rudy Glenn. We'll get it back for Moreira. Off the boards for Granitza. Look at Glenn wide open. Save Peter Malbuck to keep Pittsburgh in the game. If that one gets through and it's down by three, it could be game over at that point. Topolsky running back. We'll see how big that save looms if Pittsburgh can get one. Gordon Smith from Topolsky brings it in. Gordon right side. Captain in front. Off the boards. Nothing for Pittsburgh. It comes all the way back out of the clear. Topolsky in very deep. Is Smith. Heading it down, he wanted leverage, but it's broken up. Here's the counterattack. Granitza with Roberts. It's two on three. The pass intercepted. Topolsky got a piece of it, and now Gordon Smith will run with it. Pittsburgh changing on the fly. Terlecki will get it. From Topolsky. Stan going wide to the left wing boards. Shoots it off the boards. Far post. Woo. Look at the way that one hit. It no almost luck. caromed in, John Paul. No luck at all. Here's another counter. Game starting to open up. Granitza wide open as Glenn. The shot saved by Peter Mobbling off the left foot.
it. O'Hara coming back. Look at how wide open the game is going now. Counterattack. One run up the field, one run back for the other side. And O'Hara leads for Sibbies. He's got to go out. Great play, Aguera. A game saver right there. That's what he did when he got that foot out extended. Val Fernandez running it back. Cuts to the right. Off the boards. Nobody home. Boy, it is end to end right now. Topolsky blocked by Dan Canner. Kapka has a tackle away from him. Peter Mavlik must win it. He puts it upstairs. I was almost waiting for two minutes to be called because that one looked almost obvious. Granted, he was under pressure, but I thought he was going to bang it off the boards. The determining factor on that one might have been that Peter wasn't pressured enough to want to put that one upstairs. And now Pittsburgh makes a change. Tolecki is on with, he stays on with Charlie Green and Franz Sock. 3.44 to go, 5-3. Chicago leading, there's Karl Heinz Krenica. You know him by now. Every time you see a replay, he's got something to do with that goal, it seems. And you know the way Topolsky has worked on him this afternoon, how hard he's had to work for his goals. But on a couple of them, one of them on a power play, uh, you're not, or right after a power play, he wasn't really marked the way he was by Topolsky. Adam has not been on him necessarily for all of the goals. Ball played into Magali. Blocked by Green. Last one was on a power play. I said after, but it was on the power play. Trelecki cutting to the right side. Takes the shot, and Aguera stops out on the short side. And look at where he's coming. He may get caught on the left side. He gives it up to Magali. Parkinson, nobody running with him. I think your teammates would have to get used to that because you just don't see goalkeepers do that very often. Especially this year. Slobo used to make it an art, but even he doesn't come out like he used to. Green on the right side for Earhart Cap. Earhart running it in on the left side. Gordon Smith wants to smack it off the boards. Broken up by the sting. Morera pushed by Gordon Smith. No foul. Terlecki trying to get it. Look at Morera go. He turns on the speed. Green can match him with speed. He's going to have to. And Charlie ran that play down well. Ball played to Terlecki. Great cut to the inside. Wide open on the left is Gordon Smith. The stand runs it through. Plays it in for Gordon. He holds. Wanted it back for Terlecki. Broken up. Gordon will get it back, smacks it first time, it goes into the crowd out of play. So, it's 5-3. Chicago still leading at 2.38 remaining. That could have been a big score had the Spirit been able to get a hold of one. When Terlecki broke up the field, had he been able to hit Gordon Smith right away, it might have made a better situation. But Stan made such a great cut, and he had some momentum going with him that he decided to hang on to the ball and create a situation. By the time he gave it to Gordon Smith, I thought Chicago settled into it pretty well, and Smith's forte is really his defense as opposed to his passing or scoring, and he got put in a tough spot in the corner with a couple of players on him and couldn't get it through. Exactly right, John Paul, and a good opportunity for the Pittsburgh Spirit. They need that goal, and they need it quickly. Whistle on the restart. Simonton will be putting it back in play with Naguera. 5-3, Chicago up by a couple. 2.35 remaining. Fourth and final quarter. Pittsburgh needs two to tie. Long throw upfield. Topolsky breaks it up, and now it's picked, kicked back in. It goes out of play. Pittsburgh with the ball. And it will be Topolsky who will put it in play to John O'Hara. Right at the midfield line. Looking for child. Blocked. And it goes out of play. Last touch by Simonton. Remember, Chicago still has five fouls. So if, if Pittsburgh can draw another one, it'll be interesting to see whether or not John Kowalski goes with a sixth attacker and, in effect, has a two-man power play, whether he just goes with one. But that's all speculation. Chicago needs to get a foul. O'Hara plays it in the box, broken up. It's out to Leverage. Let's it fly off of Paul Child's foot and comes way back. Look who's there. Carl Heinz Kronitsa. He's got a man wide open, spalling off the boards. Topolsky will get it. Toes it up for O'Hara. Off the right wing boards for Child. Knocking it back to John O'Hara. Johnny will carry it. Tripped up. That's a sixth foul. With two minutes exactly remaining in the game, that means that the power play could go to the end unless Pittsburgh scores it right away. As we look at Derek Spalding, I see John Kowalski sending Stan Trelecki on. And if ever there is a time for Pittsburgh to come in, it's now because John Sanders, it's do or die. That's it. Two minutes to go. Exactly right. Exactly two minutes left in the game. I was kind of surprised maybe Pittsburgh didn't take their, their time, time out, out here in the Me second too. half and, and talk about the possibility of bringing Peter Mavlik off. 
uh, you're down by two goals, so you need two to tie and keep it going here. It's five to three. And Pittsburgh did score 41 seconds into the third quarter on the power play. Peter Moblick expressing uh, some communication to the bench, possibly saying that if we get the ball back, you want the timeout. But right now, no indication of that thing happening. Right now, it's a power play, though, for Pittsburgh. Let's see if they can score on it. They're down by a couple. Hagen from Terlucky. The shot taken, and it went right off the fingers of Victor Naguera. Hagen got it up a little bit high, but high enough that Naguera had to make a reaction save. I like that, though. I like going right to the attack, not dribbling too much, not making too many passes before you put that ball in play and try to get something started before the other team can really settle into whatever defensive uh, stance they're going to be in. Yeah, especially right now. They need a quick one. They don't want to score with five seconds left of the penalty. It's played out to Liverage. That one goes upstairs. So Chicago will take the ball. A minute 53 remaining. I see Franz Matthew loosening up on the Chicago bench. Willie Roy may want to use him if he has to. Bothered by a groin pull. He did so well against Stan Trelecki, I thought, in the opening quarter. And then uh, sat out some stage in the second quarter is where we started to miss him. Long ball. That's a break. Wasted. Yep. That's a gift. When you have that ball in that situation, you try to hold on to it, and Aguera was his own worst enemy on that. Terlecki leads for Hagen. Child open in the right corner. It's played out to Terlecki on the left. Stan has not taken a lot of shots today. No. That was one, but he never gets on goal as he's taken down. Hagen, nice cut to the inside. A shot. Save, Aguera. That's a big save for Aguera. And he clears it out. I'll tell you, he has really come up big several times. That was a brilliant play. I'm surprised he even saw it, much less made the save on it. So lucky, running it hard. Takes the shot, blocked. Child knocked it back, but it's off the mark. Chicago will come back. Three on two, shorthanded. Lead ball, Fernandez open. Shot is blocked by Peter Mobley. Sibbies with it, knocking it back for Dave Hagen. A minute nine to go now. Spirit down by two, five to three. Sibbies ahead for Trelecki. There's the announcement, less than a minute now to go. Stan tackled and a foul. That is foul number seven on Chicago. I think they're going to see the timeout now from Pittsburgh. Stan limping a little bit. Now we see it. And Earhart Cap already has the goalkeeper's jersey on. He's hurting right there. There it is again. Terlecki hesitates now, decides to make a move. He's tackled. But they got Stan more than the ball. And Stan is still limping right at the red line as he heads over toward the Pittsburgh bench area. He got kicked hard low on the right ankle. I still think you're going to see him right back in there. He, he's a kind of player that can withstand a lot of pain. We were talking before about Granitza taking dives and other players. Stan has not missed many games as a member of the Pittsburgh Spirit because of injury. He is a durable player. And if you see him after a game with the ice on him, I mean, he does take a beating. And I'm sure Granitza does, too. They're superstar athletes, but they work hard for the goals that they get, and they take a lot of punishment. With uh, 56 seconds left, John Kowalski will have a sixth attacker. He will have Earhart cap on it. You kind of wonder what kind of a game this would have been if some of those near misses had gone in for Pittsburgh, especially there on a power play where anything could happen. But even before that, Pittsburgh did end up with a 3-1 lead at one point, but before that, I think in the second quarter, when they had some chances to do some damage. I remember Hagen missed one off the post. Liverich missed one when it looked like they were going to really get some momentum going. But they should have had enough the way they came out in that third quarter. But I give Chicago a lot of credit for their comeback. It is Cap with the goalkeeper's jersey. You can see Earhart just to the left of the screen. Earhart. So a two-man advantage, basically. We'll give it up for Hagen. Didn't get it where he wanted. Oh, yeah. lucky right corner off the glass. Wide left side. Liverich wants to sell it. That goes high. Cap. Cranks it down low. Sibbies with a header. High into the air it goes. Liverts trying to win it. He'll eventually help Cap get control. Right side for Hagen. 39 seconds left of the game. 5-3. Chicago up by two. Hagen to Cap. Strikes it hard off the glass. Trelecki bangs it. It's deflected. Loose ball outside of the box. Rudy Glenn in the corner. Pittsburgh's going to get the ball. It's played out now. Hagen. 23 seconds left of the game. Very hard Cap. For Terlecki cutting in. Shot headed down and wide. Terlecki will try to kick it back in, and that's it for the Pittsburgh Spirit. Ten seconds are left as it's going down the field. They never stopped trying in this game. They gave it their best against the Chicago Stink team. It was just too much for them this afternoon. That's it as Hagen kicks it long, ending the game. The Chicago Sting have defeated the Pittsburgh Spirit in a hard-fought game 
Five to three is our final. Stay where you are. We're coming back. We'll tell you what happened in case you missed it. You're watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer. <laughs> What could be better than Aero Plus at getting out laundry stains? A more powerful Aero Plus that gets out even more stains. New Aero Plus with more protein power to get out more tough stains. An Aero Plus that goes beyond grape juice to clean barbecue sauce and gravy. Nothing gets out every stain, but new Aero Plus gets out more of the toughest. New Aero Plus, more protein than ever to clean more stains than ever. What she got and got a lot of, lots of hair from Prell. Lots of fullness, lots of thickness, lots of hair from Prell. Goodbye limp, goodbye flat, got lots of this and lots of that. Got lots of hair from Prell. A little Prell leaves you looking like you got lots of rich, lots of thick, lots of full. Thanks a lot, sir. Get the hair that's got a lot of, get lots of hair. Struggling Artist Group Emergency Liquidation Sale for one day only. Save up to 50%. Huge sofa-style original oil paintings from $19. Smaller paintings from $3. Thousands of beautiful original oil paintings by professional artists. Absolutely no painting over $39. Struggling Artist Quality at rock-bottom Struggling Artist Prices. Struggling Artist Group Art Sale this Sunday only. Pittsburgh Marriott Green Tree, Holiday House Monroeville, and the Holiday Inn Sewickley, noon to 5 p.m. Absolutely nothing over $39. Fred, spoke to Blake. If we can lower the bid, it's ours. I need your best number. I'll call you right back. Ah, I knew you could do it, pal. Alex Cellular Car Phone Service lets you do business anywhere, anytime, which frees you up for other things. Mom! Hi, sweetheart. Just want to say goodnight. Tell Mommy I'm on my way home. Alex, for the business of life. Tied at three entering this fourth quarter of play, but it was Neil Roberts from Morera to give Chicago a 4-3 lead, and then Carl Heinz Granitia from Mike Lashev to make it 5-3. The Spirit pulled out all the stops that the penalty in the closing couple of minutes, John Paul, just came up a little bit short. Too much Carl Heinz Granitia unofficially. We have him for a couple of assists. Officially, we know he did get three goals. He went over the 100-point mark. Child Hagen and Sibbies had goals for Pittsburgh. But it seemed like uh, in this kind of a game with Chicago, John, I'm not sure how much of a lead would have been big enough. The, the turnaround in the game, if there was a key in the game, was when, uh, I believe it was Grunitsa, had scored the goal after the ball had been stolen from Stan Chalecki around the midfield line. It seemed to give Chicago some momentum, but, you know, you still can't look at that as the eventual one. Here's a, the end of it when Roberts scored. That was after an O'Hara pass had been intercepted. But when you go back to it, Naguera made some big saves, too, and Pittsburgh didn't seem to have the kind of breaks that you need. You can play well, but you need breaks as well to beat Chicago, and I don't think breaks went Pittsburgh's way this afternoon. It went the way of this man here. Here's his hat trick. One touch, bang and bang. And Nothing he much is, for uh, Bob there. He is our Stroh's offensive player of the game, Carl Heinz Granitza with the hat trick, four points in the contest. Also, defensively, we're going to go with the goalkeeper, Victor Naguero. He made some outstanding saves, uh, especially late in the game when the Spirit really had the heat on. And, of course, it is Chicago celebrating a victory here this afternoon. A good effort by the Pittsburgh Spirit. Tomorrow should be very interesting when they get back to the Civic Arena to try to do it all over again. I look forward to the plane ride. I understand we're both on the same flight so we can all talk about the game and decide what's going to happen tomorrow. It's a 2.05 kickoff, and we do hope to see you tomorrow afternoon at the Civic Arena and hope that we can have the same kind of a match that we had today, except with a better result for Pittsburgh fans. That's it this afternoon from Chicago Stadium. The final is the Chicago Sting 5, the Pittsburgh Spirit 3. For John Paul Della Camera, I'm John Sanders. We're going to join NCAA College Basketball, the tournament play St. John's in Arkansas now in progress. Thanks for being here this afternoon. You've been watching Pittsburgh Spirit Soccer.